Aloha my kako everyone. Welcome to another power, powerful, power packed, all the good things episode <laughs> <laughs> of the Moana Nui podcast. My name is Moana, your host, and I'm excited to be with you guys tonight. We yes. have, first of all, we have one legend and I was excited about that, but now we have two. So you guys yes. are in for a very special episode tonight. Dana and I are really, really excited. Um, but again, let me introduce myself. My name is Moana. I am obviously the host of the podcast. I am the author of the Adventures of Nakoa and Ohea children's book series, editor of the Wildcard Chronicles comic book series, publisher at Burning Spear Comics, champion and advocate of the indigenous community and the independent creative community as well. This is the home of the podcast, of the Moana Nui podcast, and those are the things that we love. I am joined by the wonderful, talented, the one who's like the yin to my yang, Dana Morgan. Hello, everyone. I am Dana, and I we're so happy for you to be joining us tonight. For those that may or may not know me, I am a cosplay event and staff con photographer, for cons such as MomoCon, Anime Weekend, Atlanta, Dragon Con, and many more. Um, you can see my photos with those conventions along with DC Comics, but also I do event planning and a whole lot more. And we're so excited for this next episode. Literally, we said this particular night was a juggernaut of guests. We had our first one come up to the bat, loaded up the bases, and now this next guest is going to hit everybody home. So be <laughs> ready for this one. But before we announce him, of course, we have some announcements, and uh, we're going to go ahead and give uh, going through our announcements before we get started. Uh, tomorrow night, Tune in. We are having a dance hall with DJ Wanderlust. Be sure to join us at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you'll get a little bit of that Caribbean, Afro-Caribbean sounds. And you are just going to be having fun dancing. We, You can dance along. We won't see you, but you'll be seeing us. So we'll have some people joining us and just have some fun with us and just enjoy some music. Also, on Tuesday, April 6th, we will be having our Lumberjack launch party with Morgan and Danny at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. And thanks to our Kickstarters, you help us make the number of backers for allowing us to open up our special incentive, which I will cosplay on that particular episode. So, yes, I will no longer, I will not be in my usual nerd gear i will be dressed in cosplay for that tuesday april 6 episode so tune in at 8 p.m if not only to see morgan and danny but to see me in cosplay <laughs> live and in person but definitely tune in we're looking so forward to that episode also this week we've had some amazing guest spotlights this week earlier today you got to see at 7 p.m robert jeffries who has a Kickstarter right now for Fox Chronicles Live. So please go ahead and support that Kickstarter, but you could also get his comic, Route 3, as part of our indie bundle available on our Kickstarter right now. So if you pledge early, you got that part of that bonus bundle, but if you missed it and you still want that bundle, you have available for you to be able to get that added on for your pledge. And of course, on this episode, we have the juggernaut of indie art, <laughs> the Muhammad Ali of art and talent and just amazing, just mind-blowing talent. We have the amazing Marcus Williams on this episode who will be coming on shortly. So we're so excited. And finally, our last announcement, we want to, because in a tie to our person that we are having on this episode, once we hit our 75 backers on our Kickstarter, and we're currently just eight backers away, just only eight backers away, we are unlocking five rare chances to get on Marcus commission list. Yes, everything he touches is 
fire. So do not, you do not want to miss out on that opportunity. Plus, also at our 75 backers, we're also adding three new digital comics to the bundle, Harriet Tubman and Nightmare and Naya uh, Kayer. We're adding them to uh, the bundle. So definitely, once we get those eight backers, you're getting that added into the bundle, plus getting a chance to grab um, one of those slots on Marcus' list. Finally, the Moana Nui podcast is now official streaming and available on Apple, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. So also be on the lookout. We'll soon have that on Google and Pandora and few others. So now we're going to have several platforms for you to be able not only to watch us live, but also catch some of our podcasts that you can listen while you're driving to work on or on the road or riding the train. You can listen to some of our podcasts on there too. And now we're going to go ahead and introduce our very special guest. Marcus Williams is your friendly neighborhood artist. He is an American illustrator, currently the creator and artist behind comic projects such as Tuskegee Airs and Supernatural. A longtime lover of video games, comic art, and all things animated, Marcus dedicated his young artistic years to fine-tuning his illustration muscles by the way of freelancing. Over 15 years later, he is catching his stride and still ever growing in hopes of being a well-rounded illustrator. I think he already is, but that's what his bio says. Uh, stationed in Atlanta, Georgia, Marcus spends most of his time toiling away late night on everything from illustrating children's comic books, comic art, to random character commissions and more. He is a proud father of two, and Marcus managed to steal enough time to create loads of artwork and check homework. He's excited about the direction his comic properties are heading in, and he looks forward to creating more forms of visual entertainment and stories to enjoy. And before we bring Marcus up, we have a special co-host that's going to be helping us out tonight. Let's bring our special co-host for tonight's episode. For it, we have Mr. Greg Burnham. You all know him from Tuskegee Airs <laughs> and so much more. <laughs> oh my goodness, we got uh, our other juggernaut right here. So if you're a fan of Greg's work, we got him on this episode. And of course, his partner in crime, Mr. Marcus Williams. Yes. And now let us bring Mr. Mr. Greg Burnham. Go ahead and introduce yourself for those that may not know you. Hi, my name is Greg, <laughs> and I, I write comic books and stuff. <laughs> Ever the so, humble person. I bet exactly. Like excited. You said legend and everything. People were probably like, oh my God, I can't wait to see who it is. <laughs> Boom, surprise. <laughs> They're just like, ah! <laughs> nah, they're probably like, mm, I just saw them the other day. <laughs> Grambling State University up in here. Oh, all day long. <laughs> Ooh, I'm, I just, um, so, you know, I grew up partially in uh, Bolger City, Louisiana, and Shreveport is like the city that's right attached, and they're having a Bayou Classic there Ooh. next month, and I'm going to head out there and sell some stuff. Okay, okay. Right, like, I'm working on uh, this little deal right now to be able to... Uh, Move some stuff, so I'm really excited about that. Nice, Thank you for nice. shouting out Gremlin and Moana. <laughs> hey, it's all love up in here. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It looks yes. like Marcus just stepped away from his seat. <laughs> <laughs> He's still moving his chair. Right? There it is. I knew it. <laughs> he thought your intro was going to be a little bit longer. <laughs> Um, how's everybody doing? Congratulations on the podcast and the, Thank you. Uh, you know, and the uh, Kickstarter. And I hope you guys get all the monies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Every one of the monies. Um, 
because I, I know like these things, you guys, even as a labor, I mean, it can seem like a labor of love, but there's a lot of work that goes into, you oh, yeah. know, putting these together. I've just been guesting, you know, on other people's and that's a lot of work. So yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> people keep saying, you need to, you need to have your own podcast. And I'm like, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, you can just come and be a guest co-host on mine. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, we'll set up the platform and you can just host that. There you go. Exactly. That's what I need. I just tell me where I'm supposed to, what time I'm supposed to be there. And then just let me talk some. Yeah. Go. I mean, yeah. No, seriously, though. Like, if your mm -hmm. peeps want to hear from you and you just, like, you tell us what the topics are, what dates are available, and we'll, you know, yep. we'll handle the logistics for sure. That's another added um, you know, goal of what we want to do with this podcast. I don't want y'all to hear my voice all the time. Like I want you to, this is a shared platform, um, for the indie community. I mean, that's how I view it. So bring the good, all the good I'm, topics and things. I'm down. I'm sorry. I'm looking at your shirt. I need a shirt roll call here. Um, that shirt look fresh, fresh. Yeah. What's this is off say? of, um, um my deep. melanin and my roots run deep. where you get that from? This is from Blurtish, Blurtish.com. I think. Oh, yes. shout out to Keith. If Keith Cooper, yep. Mm -hmm. Those are yep. my guys, man. Yeah, I'm they, trying to get they Keith have some up fire there shirts on there. To come, uh, to come with me um, for this thing in Shreveport for the Bayou Classic. Because, you know, he went to Southern, unfortunately. So, you know, <laughs> Here we go. That's, but that's my dog. So I'm trying to get him <laughs> a, a spot to where he can vent. He yeah, that friendly well rivalry. Him. Yeah, he does pretty well with the uh, pop-ups um, mm -hmm. out in Baton Rouge. Um, and similar to what you guys are doing, he's doing it with, uh, you know, like he, he'll buy books from us wholesale or mm -hmm. whatever. And, you know, so he's helping to, you know, get us out in places that we're yeah. not able to touch. So it's exactly. awesome. And uh, Dana, what kind of shirt do you have on? Looks I have familiar. my MCU ATL shirt on. Whoa, look at that. Where'd that come from? I wonder who designed <laughs> that. Oh, not me, mm. but my squad, you know. Yes. So, yeah. You and Marcus's squad. This is, yeah. So yeah. anybody that's in Atlanta, uh, Marcus yeah. and Greg, uh, pre-pandemic. <laughs> Leonard Millsap is, the, Leonard they is the, other, um, the other member of the MCU ATL squad. Uh, we're excited because we have some opportunities to start doing some stuff on like a smaller scale. Um, somebody, uh, Mark Harris, he mentioned our uh, Black Panther screening a little while ago in Tag League because he was just talking about like some of his favorite Marvel, like MCU experiences. And I'm like, man, I don't think we could ever tap, like top that. But then at the same time, I'm like, we're going to definitely try. But that was just yeah. an amazing that was one of my favorite nights of my yes. life. <laughs> it, it was an awesome, awesome night yeah. that you, you all did with MCU. So if you're in the Atlanta market, follow, definitely follow them on Facebook so you can hear about any upcoming events and things like that. So you can definitely be ready to grab your ticket to be a part of any of the MCU Atlanta events because it's definitely definitely don't want to miss it, especially any of the movie screenings. Yeah, yeah. So Good now time. we're going to bring forward the the man, the myth, and the legend, the juggernaut <laughs> of indie art. If you you've seen his stuff all over the place, Mr. Marcus Williams, Marcus the visual. What up? I was like, listen now, listen, I ain't tap dancing tonight. Y'all ain't gonna get me blushing on this here. <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful uh, introduction. And you know, you're gonna have to get this revenge done to you because they didn't know how awesome she is. She be like literally on the, on this like one foot away from breaking the universe with kindness. Yeah. It's like you can't be this this good all the time. You just can't do that. It's gonna cause some rift, breaking the <laughs> yeah. universal structure. And she's like, continue. I don't care. She's like, I don't care. Just let it all burn. Yeah, let me support is. you. Let me support you for the umpteenth time. We're like, come on, man. Yeah. If y'all don't hey, know, to bring, us. me, me, my my personality is just bringing balance to the world because we got all this craziness and and all right. these people being that way. 
you know, they have to put put some people like me ever so often sprinkled in because it's got to bring that balance. You got to bring that That's goodness. Right. Bring that goodness in. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was I, I kept running back and forth to the camera because I was setting up this glowy light behind me. Ah, oh, um, fancy. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, oh, she, I'm, she, I'm about to go on now. And I had to stop <laughs> and I had to run back. I was like, oh, they ain't coming on now. So well, we so can see you your way. We're like, we're going to chat a little bit more. <laughs> You didn't pull out the Christmas, Christmas lights. You on can't. There. You can't have Christmas lights uh, with a remote control. Okay, yes, so listen, man. It's, well, I don't have those yet. Okay, <laughs> I don't have those yet. But I was proud that I was able to get that to work. Look, green, blue. You see what I'm saying? It's just high technology. Okay. But yes, thank you for having me on. Thank you guys, everybody that's joined. Oh, you know what? Let me um post. I went to the Twitter page, and I'm gonna try to post this now that we are live. And okay. I'm gonna put that on the Instagram. So I'm gonna do those stories. I'm getting trying to get better at the stories things. Yeah. All so that yes, fun. but yes, talk about it. Talk about it. I'm working on that 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 greatness. You said Muhammad Ali. Of, come on now, Danny. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was gonna say yes. Clubber Lang. <laughs> like you, you went really big with Muhammad Ali. Can we give him Clubber Lang? I'm eating food. Like, you know, that? come on now, Marcus Ali. I'm trying. I'm just trying to be. I'm just trying to be out of here. You know, sharing uh, stuff that I'm a fan of, and we I all mean, on the journey. It, but that. you're knocking it out the park. You're literally just giving. Yes. You're floating like a butterfly, stinging like a bee, with bringing this stuff out. <laughs> we we go to sleep at night, and we wake up, and we're like, "Oh, what? Yeah. Marcus just posted this. Holy yeah. crap! Okay, is right. he doing a?" And here I am looking at stuff like, is he doing a poster of that? All right, let me mark that down because I need to get that when I see him next too. That is okay. That is. There's I need so add many. That. I might have to go back through and figure out what I didn't sell last year, and then put it on a table and say, oh, all of these things I didn't go to a show and sell this right. last year. So yep. yes, it's gonna be a good bit. It's gonna be a good bit. Oh yeah. There's a lot yeah. I didn't post. Yeah, just be yeah. ready because when you see me, I'm gonna be like, all right, I need the whole left side of your table. <laughs> see, but I think if we do it right, we're gonna, think, I'm, gonna just, we, I'm, I'm gonna take care of you before I go to a show, Dana. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dana's telling the truth when she says she's telling the whole the truth, whole truth huh? left side of your table. Like when, <laughs> right. when she was first, right. like when we first would meet her, we'd be like, is she serious? Because she'd be like, I want that yeah. and that. Just hold him for me. I'll be back to get. I was just about to say she wouldn't say. She didn't even say. Well, I don't want to pick him up now. But when I get back, I was like, Oh, here we go. Right. She ain't coming back. And then here she come. Like, she, yeah. Yeah. What the bag? <laughs> Marcus, you got my bag ready? I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. Hold on. She was serious. <laughs> Now they're coming up the because usually when I first yeah. see them, I, I do my drive by because I'm working right. for the con. Right. So I have to say my hi and say, okay, I want all this. So just know I want yeah. all this. I'm going to be back on my break. Soon as my break comes, do, 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 come and get my stuff. <laughs> Marcus, where it's in? And she messed around and did that, did that, uh, that Nubia commission. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, so Dana, I got to thank you on air to say thank you for commissioning my most pirated art I've ever created. Yes. <laughs> ever. Yeah, that In all of my artistic Dana's career. <clears throat> that was Dana's fault, y'all. Um, <laughs> you know, if I don't know if you have it around you, but that's the one. Now I can honestly say there's some Asian company. I don't want to know. I don't know. I don't know. But they won't stop. They won't stop. They'll it's like whack-a-mole, they'll go down for a little while, they'll come back. Yeah, now they, they didn't start. They started putting Christianity words onto it, like Jesus loves me and I'm a strong <laughs> black Christian woman on the side. But that one has a Bible verse on it. I'm like, come on. I see one with like my, a whole paragraph. Like, yes, like they just wrote yes. out like a whole paragraph of strong yes. affirmation. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> yeah, I want to thank Dana for uh helping me to create my most pirated work of my career. So hopefully when I look back, you're like, Marcus, has anyone ever? Yes. In fact, it was one long time ago. It's just, uh, <laughs> this nice lady had the insight for me to draw Nubia. Yeah. And sure enough, yes, today is that. I got to, I, I really do have to have like a, I want to do like a brother, uh, like a bro man appreciation board. 
<laughs> of all of the pirating that has happened yeah. with that one piece. I think I'm going to do that. Because yeah, it literally, it's, it's really like, hard. for those that, you know, to kind of give y'all background, it's like Marcus knows every so often I get inspired in the middle of the freaking night that was like, Marcus, I want to commission you to do this. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> and he's just I'm like, I'm not going to surprise okay. anymore. Yep, and he's like, I know how this works. And he's like, what do you want done? I was like, okay, I want a commission. It's going to have Diana and Nubia together. And he's like, okay. And then I was like, I'll see you at BlurCon. You can give it to me at BlurCon. <laughs> and I went ahead and paid him for it. And then he brought it to yeah. me at BlurCon. Of course, I had to take a picture with him with it. And then after that, yeah. he, he asked about posting it. And people ask how they can get a copy of the print, and then he made it into a print. And then after that, it just went wildfire. After that, <laughs> somebody somebody asked to see it. Marcus, do you have it? Um, yes. The, the yes. How do I? So I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to share my screen, y'all. Yes, you yeah. can. <laughs> yeah, I'm, Let me warm up. Philip, I'm pretty sure you've seen this before because it really went like bananas on the internet. Yeah, um, and it's still out there like crazy what it did and now you see all of these uh nubia comic books and mm -hmm. this stuff starting to come out but uh i, re I remember because when marcus released it like we were getting a barrage of people that are like oh look it's black wonder woman and so we're literally like there were people were writing think pieces and people <laughs> are arguing and it's like no this is a real character so yes i'm not saying that marcus and you know, by way of Dana, I'm not saying that you guys. Oh, they later. They did this new buzz <laughs> that we're seeing now, but I can say that you guys definitely threw, you know, some okay. some water in the bucket uh, <laughs> to to get this thing going. Because now, like, there's you guys check out the um the Nubia comic book, the graphic novel. Oh, I can't um, wait! I'm going to be picking that up. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got I got it, and um, it's really good. Ooh. It's really good. Um, and which, which, which one are you talking about? The graphic novel. I can grab it real quick if y'all want. The new graphic novel, please. Yes, oh, please. yeah. No, I haven't seen it. You talking about the young one or are you talking about the, the adult Nubia? You have to go know. get it. Oh, wait a minute. Because I get down for the cause. So. <sighs> Application window. Here we go. So yeah, like the adult one is uh, in this uh, future state. There it is. This yeah, is this is where this all started. Yes. This is a this From was a, a sketch version. Yep. That came to me in the so middle of the dang night. And Marcus <laughs> began these messages like at two, three in the morning. Marcus, okay, it just sounds crazy, but this came to me in my dream, and I need for you to draw it for me. <laughs> 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 and there's the colored yes. version. This is the color, <clears throat> but of course they've since cut her out. This is the one that to this day, I'm like, listen, I'm not surprised when I see yeah. pirated. This is they like, pirate they, this, that all one. of this is, all of this is out. All of this is cut out and it's got like a Bible verse, you know, <laughs> right alongside here. And I'm like, thieves have decided yeah, it's to like, put a Bible verse. Now you just have to watermark the hell out of your picture. <laughs> I keep, but see, I keep telling people it doesn't work because yeah, I sell so, posters. I've seen they, people pirate with the watermark. Yeah, they, the watermark, they, they don't care. Exactly, don't and care. the crazy part is the people buy it with the watermarks on it. It's like, dude, you can tell this don't belong right. to him. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah. been shared all over. Thank you, Dana. I appreciate. Go you. ahead, Dana. Um, Go ahead, you know, Dana. You know it's gonna Somebody come again. To I'll, I'll get woken up in the middle of the night again. I'll have to hit you up again. Right, right. <laughs> and I, I've, I've since created a number of other designs, like you know, just to kind of pay homage. This one doesn't open, does it? Oh, it does open. Look at that. I forgot about this one. Okay, don't don't pay me no mind. I just thought I lost this one. Where is the where is the line art for this one? I don't Look know, like our fellow artists funny. out here are saying the same thing. Katie uh, mentioned that people pirate her unicorn pictures and print them on T-shirts with the watermark still on it. Yep. That's, that's they don't care here. about nothing. Care about none of that. It's not what happens. This is um, 
So I have, you know, like this is a colorful yes. version. I was like, if she if she did all of the swapping, if she no longer worked for the Greek gods and started working for the Orishas, African gods, yeah, no, it was. It's like I, you know, but this one, I'm sorry, it doesn't beat to what happened with this one apparently. So you know, um, I gotta start putting Bible verses, y'all. We'll see. We'll yeah, see we'll hit we'll hit up that whole side of the you know, industry and get you that money. <laughs> I could come up with some good quotes for you. Exactly. <laughs> this was the one I was telling you guys about. Uh, oh, yes. That's okay, the one so I'm looking one. forward to. Yes. LL that new Nubia one. And, uh, hey, man, show the paper. Let me see the pages. <laughs> well, man, I'm not out here. I saw the cover before, man. Let me see the art. Marcus, uh, right, DC right. uh, Black Geek said you should have as the Bible verse Nubia 316. All right. I love All right. it. <laughs> Is that, I don't know if that's, is that considered blasphemy? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> if you want to get technical. Uh, hey, people could be, you know, they worship, you know, the different gods and the gods are based on the com. you know, these characters in the comic books are based off the gods. So right. you're, you're, it's, it's a whole different religion. And then the, right. this will be the church of Nubia. <laughs> <laughs> Like, please don't smack me, y'all. <laughs> oh well, well Marcus, as he's getting some stuff together, as far as when yes. all of y'all watching, he's going to be doing some art while we're going to be talking to him, asking some questions uh, of him during this session. So uh, definitely uh, look, definitely look forward of getting that. Oh, let's see, we got another quote that you can put down. Act right, or thou shalt catch these hands. <laughs> Man, that's, that's easy, easy to uh, understand. There's not a lot of interpretation. Wow. Yeah. Uh, wow, I like it though. It's catchy, you know. Um, I think it'll work. I think it'll work. Yes. <laughs> you know, Mary I don't asks, get mad at this do you get point. your ideas from dreams? Who, who oh, asks you or me? You well, we I already know I get my ideas. I was about to say you already explained yours. <laughs> but as for right. for you, do you get them from dreams? Uh, I have before, um, but I think I think I've um, I think that happened when I was younger. More more often when I was younger, because I would dream I'd dream something amazing. And then I dwell on it, uh, but I had to go to school, so I had to kind of juggle the idea. But I think over time, when you do, when you practice visualizing so much, this is thirty plus years of seeing something in your mind and playing with that thing. You know, you do that every day, every day, every day, or just about every day. Um, I don't have to be asleep anymore, so I can literally say, "Oh, you know what? That's dope. Yeah. Let me see it from another angle. Let me see it from that. All right, yep, that's what I want." And so, um, and I've been working with Greg for over 20 years and literally he's, he's seen me draw stuff in my sketchbook where I'm like, oh, you know, it'll be dope. And then, you know, um, I may or may not talk him through it all the way. I'll just be like, oh, shut up, shut up. I know what I'm drawing. And it will be out to eat or something. And he's seen me draw. Um, he, he, we were at uh, a, rest, a restaurant here um, in Atlanta, uh, Bahama Breeze, when I was drawing, images for the Black Panther and Storm uh, heritage. You know, we were sitting at a, at a, a restaurant and I was just going, you know, um, but thinking back, that didn't come from, it wasn't, I, I didn't have to be sleep to say, you know, it'll be dope. I don't have to, I, now it's just constantly going on. Sometimes it's, it's, it's like, uh, it's invasive mm -hmm. because it, it's literally, I could be talking about something or listening to something or doing something. And then my mind is like, ah, oh, bro, check this out. I'm like, huh? Oh yeah, you're right. That's dope. I should draw that. All right. And I, you know, it's, it's, it almost takes its own precedent. So yeah, it's, it's, I don't have to be sleeping anymore, but uh, I, I still have some amazing stuff that happens in the dreams. <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to link. So all of these work. Where, where should I link this to y'all? Facebook or how does that work? Which one should I tell people to go to? There's YouTube. Either one of them. They can go to any of those yeah. platforms and be watching mm -hmm. it live from Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. Got it. Okay. Let's, I'm going to send them to YouTube, I guess. 
I suppose. Okay. <laughs> but yes, hopefully that answers the question. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a blessing and a curse sometimes because I, I see things in fully rendered motion sometimes. And mm. I'm like, man, I want to show. And uh, that's, that comes back to an idea that me and Greg had a while ago. What, 2000? We were talking about uh, the story of Khalif, Greg? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. That, and that, um, yeah, that was, yeah. that was like an idea I had since I was like 10. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when I started, my, you know, we sat down. We started talking about it and I'm, I'm like Marcus and I hear the music. I think Marcus probably sees it moving better than I do. I hear the music and the, you know, like the settings and the tension and the audio and stuff. So it's like, we started talking about this. It's something we still haven't unveiled to the world because right. it's like, it, it has to be done in it, like that fully rendered. You need to hear the sound, you need to hear everything. Mm -hmm. And the craziest part about it is I came up with this a long time ago and we got together and we kind of like really, you know, perfected it and it, we still haven't seen anything like it. So it's like, once, you know, we get to that point where studios are like, Hey, what else you got? I think it's going to take over the world. That's the plan anyway. Right. Wow. Cause Greg, at the point Greg was like, let's just do a comic. I'm like, and I started drawing, I was like, no, we can't do no, that. Greg. It's not going to be good enough. Uh, I was like, it's, this is too much action. And I remember saying, it's not that it can't be done in a comic because mm -hmm. Japanese, Japanese comics are amazing at action, mm -hmm. but with the music and the, you know, especially talking about hip hop and lyrics, you know, um, and I, I hate, I have a personal hate for, you know, trying to dictate hip hop or, you know, uh, transcribe, I'm sorry, not to transcribe yeah. hip hop into, or just, it's just, it, it irks my nerve. So I was like, nah, this is gonna work, man. We can't, can't do a comic. He's like, why? Cause it won't work. It's not gonna work. He's like, yeah, just, no, no, it has to move. It has to be audible. We have to do it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that's, that's good. where I see it literally moving in my head. And I have to take snapshots as an illustrator. Uh, this image of these kids running, I see that happening at the end of like a trailer for the, the show, uh, you know, and it's just a and I take that snapshot and I'm like, all right, that's good, I guess. That works. But then I got to deal with all of the cool animation that's in my head. I'm like, hmm, I guess this, I guess this work, you know. Oh, you like that? Whatever. I saw the whole animated thing in my head. So it's it's kind of a blessing and a curse, but I, yeah, I don't have to be asleep anymore. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> now as you're getting ready to set up and start your drawing so everybody can watch you draw while yes. we're talking to yes. you uh moana is <laughs> going to start off with uh the first question oh yeah so um every time we have someone on we start off with the origin story um so for people who may not even know you uh tell us a little bit about yourself <laughs> where did you grow up and how did your artistic journey begin Me? Oh, great. Me? You. Yes. You. Oh, very good. <laughs> you're, 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 you're like setting the, the rules. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like she was setting the rules. I was like, all right, that sounds like a good time. Who's going first? <laughs> um, yeah. So, where did I start my artistic quest? Is what is what we're talking about? Yeah. Artistic quest. Where you grew up fast and forward. all that. Mm, mm, I'm going to do a very elevator pitch about that part because you know uh apparently i was born in louisiana i don't remember all of that so uh, you know uh spent some time there my mom got remarried into the navy so now we're on base in san diego california that's when my memory did start so that's what i care about i remember that and it's beautiful san diego was great beaches and wonderful weather had a few earthquakes in there didn't matter um, that is where I can honestly say uh, the inspiration for who I became, video games, um, first thing, seeing characters, interacting with characters. You had Mario, Sonics, and the Street Fighters and everything. Um, I would get the game manuals from those experiences. And, you know, you play the game, win or lose, I would take the game manual and I'd sneak it to school with me. And I try to draw the characters. I was not born good. I'm sorry, 
to this point, all the people that say, and Dana, you said it too, talking about talent. Um, yeah. I was not naturally talented at all. My brother can vouch for this. He said I sucked for a long time. Well, they said that about like, Michelangelo too. So, uh, <laughs> right. So, yes, no, see, you're, talent, you're Michelangelo level. I guess. Well, thank you. Uh, I want to say that skill came with, you know, me reverse engineering. So studying someone else's art, reverse engineering it to the point where it was anyone else that was sane would say, well, I'm just not, I guess I'm just not cut out for this skill. <clears throat> but I didn't care about being terrible. It was just fun to try to, you know, render what I saw. Cartoons, uh, Looney Tunes, Ninja Turtles, uh, anything, anything moving. I thought I wanted to be an animator, Disney cartoons. So fast forward and I got my first comic. It was a uh, X-Men comic. Jim Lee was a uh, drawing at the time and I had never seen Wolverine. Uh, someone, you know, said something about Wolverine. I was like, who's Wolverine? They showed me, I was like, okay, so you're telling me this dude has metal skeleton, claws, healing factor, and he's an anti-hero. This doesn't look like anything I've ever seen in my life. And Jim Lee was a rock star, comic artist at the time. I couldn't draw anything like that at the time. I'd never seen any art like that. So it blew my mind and I started trying to draw that. <clears throat> you know, to, to varied amounts of success. Shortly after, guess what came out? The X-Men cartoon. So now my brain exploded twice. And it was, I think it was in within the span of like a month, maybe two. I wasn't, there was no internet, of course, children, young people that are watching this, there was no internet. So things just happened, okay? <clears throat> um, so I'm watching the cartoon. I got to hear the voices of the characters I was drawing for all these months, you know, all this time. And it really connected that, you know, uh, I was a comic fan, but I'd never owned comics. Um, love the art, love the dynamic stuff. Fast forward again, I'm, you know, about to graduate and I've cultivated some skill. I got a little better. You know, I did a, a, a six week camp in Valdosta, Georgia as an 11th grader where we got to, we got selected in the county. There was like one per special, you know, uh, skill um, throughout the school. I got picked for art. We got to go to a college campus and learn from a college professor in the field of our study. So down south uh, for six weeks, I trained under this very cantankerous uh, old old lady. Now I'm 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 kicking myself because I do not remember the woman's name, but I could draw her without any problem. She always wore sandals. She had coke bottle glasses, and she was um, super super fiery. But she retaught me how to draw, um, how to sketch more more specifically. And it was how you build a drawing, how you how you capture the essence of something, how to draw without looking at your paper. In one week, I only had it for one week, <clears throat> she completely retrained my ability to draw because I thought I was good at that point. She was like, you're good, but you're doing it wrong. So it only took one week. My arm was sore by the end of that week. So I'm graduating high school. Fast forward again, I'm graduating high school and <clears throat> working at the movie theaters. A young lady that I went to school with had graduated a year before me. She comes up to the theater. She's like, hey, Marcus, you still drawing? I'm like, yeah, I'm still drawing. What's up? I'm just you know, working here for some money. Uh, she was like, okay, cool. You should meet my, my uncle. I'm like, that's a weird thing to say to any grown man. Why should I meet your uncle? And sure enough, she says, you know, she goes on to say, well, he's the art director at Cartoon Network. And I'm like, yeah, we should meet your uncle tonight because... <laughs> I get off at 3.30, let's do that. And we did. Literally went to her uncle's house. Uh, this gentleman was the current art director for Cartoon Network. He's like, hey man, you ever heard of this show called Powerpuff Girls? I was like, I'm a 19 year old. I don't know what Powerpuff Girl is, but no. Uh, he puts in this ancient technology called a VHS tape into his VCR. And he showed me the introduction to the Powerpuff Girls. And it was cool. <clears throat> so, um, he gave me some tests, I passed the test, and I started doing some blue line, clean clean pencil lines for a, a Powerpuff Girl comic. <clears throat> so um, he gives me the check for three pages. 
and it was three thousand dollars. It's nineteen years old. Yes, you got <laughs> lost your mind. <laughs> yeah, I said, please, sir, can I have some more? And <laughs> man, he was like, all right, cool. You, you did that really quickly. Gave me five pages. I finished those. Here's a check for five thousand dollars. Eight pages. Here's a check for eight thousand dollars. I was like, you know what? I like getting paid for art. This is great. Let's do this all the time. I worked for them for about three months. Unfortunately, no other clients ever paid me that much for a long time. So, but it did start my journey as a freelance artist. And I met this guy, Greg Burnham. Uh, I think during that time, a mutual friend introduced us because Greg was looking to do a comic. So I'd done some comic stuff with the Powerpuff Girl stuff. So I was like, hey, yeah, we can do that. And um, we created a comic. Greg, where's the comic? Where the crime at, Greg? Oh, you see Greg. This. Look at this. Greg trying to get his food on. I'm exactly. right here. <laughs> I don't even understand what you're talking about. I'm Calling right here out. the whole time. All right. Hey, what's um, that comic? Yeah. This is, That's the comic. You right see that? Starving. Yeah. Starving. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. I love it. Trying to show a page that's appropriate for the children. <laughs> it's not inappropriate, but I would just say that, you know, Marcus, you could yeah. draw women uh, like very much sexy. I draw sexy people sexy. That's that's a better way to say it, okay? Has anybody, it, it, it definitely reminds me of back in the 90s for Freak Nick, the artwork that was made in that similar style. It reminds me of that artwork from Freak Nick and also from, um, oh gosh, who was the record label? Uh, Jermaine Dupree's record Dark label. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. um, 1492. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, oh, what was this? So, so, so deaf. So it reminds yes, me yes, of the artwork so from So, so deaf, too. <laughs> Right. So we, we did that. We got that put into a local uh, local record store here in Atlanta, just on consignment. We were just trying to uh, see if it would sell. It did. We just had a terrible business strategy. I think we were printing them up uh, for how much we were selling them for four dollars. And it was, costing, it was costing us. We were printing them up at this place called Kinko's. Mm. And, um, yeah. <laughs> for all the I don't know why I'm laughing. It's not college. Yeah. Young people don't know yeah, yeah. Kinko's anymore. Kinko, yeah. Yeah. What's a Kinko's? It, Kinko's is now FedEx. <laughs> FedEx so, copy and print off. center. <laughs> we were, so the thing is, like the Kinko's, they make um, the one off of like Pleasant Hill and Club Drive. Um, that was like our office. 20 years ago, like if you came there like right now, we would probably be there working. Uh, we like to say that we are the reason why they started like making people use credit cards before they yes. use any other machines or anything. Yes. Because yes. you know we may have bent a rule or two, uh, but we were printing. We were using their staple. We were using everything, and we were literally putting the books together ourselves. This is a very old. This is like a reprint from like uh, 2005 or something. But still, yeah. we were we we did it then. So we put, yeah. we printed this out. You see the white edges, <laughs> but, yeah. and we no. printed this out ourselves, stapled yeah. it, like all of that stuff ourselves. Um, people bought it like that too. It's huge. But yeah, people no, bought it exactly like that. Yes, it's bigger than my face. <laughs> like here's a a regular comic yeah. next to it, so you can see how much bigger it is. Yeah. <laughs> but people. <laughs> People bought the hell out of it, man. And um, yeah. like Marcus said, we don't we know who like, they are either. Yeah, we don't. We were losing money because people kept buying them. And so we're like, okay, it's cool. We proved that we could make something cool and people will buy it. But geez, they won't stop. And so we had to basically throw that away. Not throw it away, but put it in the back pocket because it's like yeah. we need to really learn the business side. And I think we learned a really good lesson there that it doesn't matter how dope because that book was dope. I still look, read it sometimes. I want to. I want to reprint it. Marcus wants to do new art. I want to reprint. Want to reboot it, man? We can reboot it at this point. Yeah, but I mean, you can't really it's twenty years it if it hasn't been all the way booted. Um, Somebody out there owns the first one, Greg. I know, at least but five I would 
I want to read. I, like the book was good. It was really good. Like, um, we just didn't have the understanding. We knew that we wanted to own the process. Mm. I think that's one of. I think one of the biggest things about me and Marcus that you'll always hear is trying to have ownership of our process. Yeah. So we wanted to own the process, but we didn't know anything that it took. <laughs> so we had to go do some learning um, amongst the other things. But Marcus, yeah. back to your story. <laughs> right. So, you know, fast forward another 10, 15, well, 10 years at least. Um, and that's when, uh, you know, the concept of freelancing kind of hits hard. For those that don't know, you are hired help. You're a mercenary, but for art, you know, what do you want me to do? And then people pay you to do that thing. Come back and say, yeah, I've done it. And then, they, you know, you go on, buy toilet paper and food and things like that, pay rent, gas, but you don't own anything. So you, you know, all of the work, you can put it in your portfolio. It's not yours. You can have done some of the most amazing work in your career, but it's owned by someone else and you're left with the next job. So that was a that was a point. Um, Greg uh, had been toiling and, and fiddling with the idea of doing some children's books, and I was like, "Fine, let's do it." That, I think that was 2013. 2013. <clears throat> um, so we did some children's books, um, uh, I but I had already decided. Yeah, I decided back in I think 2011. Yeah, that was right there. Yeah, they are. Right Grandpa yeah. shoes. Broken glass was first. You're muted, yeah. Greg. You know, you muted on purpose. <clears throat> I wasn't chewing or anything, so. Yeah, you were. Anyway, yeah, you notice the smooth <laughs> scroll. It's a yeah. smooth scroll. It takes time to get this good. You're right. Bring invasive green light. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So that was uh, the, as an artist, I said I'm going to focus on two paths. It was comics and children's books. And that was, you know, a part of that journey. But I started working with a comic called Hero Cats of Stellar City. And I also started doing children's books. So, um, I mean, that really was the beginning of my journey as to where it led me to now, uh, between 2011 to now. Um, I started that journey there. So what you see is, I guess, the byproduct of, you know, that time of me trying to figure out exactly how to do those things and make a living off of it. And it took time. It took time because I wasn't getting paid what I was supposed to do on Hero Cats. But I was I learned everything I needed to know. So me and Greg could say, you know what? I figured out how we'd make money doing comics and we were doing it all wrong. Here's how we print it. Here's how we distribute. Here's how we set up a table. Here's how we go to conventions. Here's and all of that was learned while doing the, you know, the cat comics. So it was very instrumental uh, in just kind of giving that confidence. So, you know, we go to New York Comic Con for the first time, uh, 2016, 2016. <clears throat> That's after we did the Kickstarter for uh, Tuskegee yeah. Airs. Didn't have the book yet, but sold posters and, you know, learned that make a lot of money on posters. This is a good time. Let's do this again. <laughs> so, um, conventions became a part of my life as well. And it's a part of my business still. Um, COVID sucks. And we I think we went to two and a half shows, two shows, maybe two and a half shows last year. Was, Normally uh, we do about 30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do about 30 Comic Cons a year. So, <clears throat> you know, that's uh, kind of where I am now. And I've just been posting stuff. If you follow me on the line, on look on the line. Uh, you can you can see my fan art. I love fan art because it allows me to just express what I want to see, um, either from industry characters that I'm a fan of. I mentioned Storm and Black Panther. They were married in Marvel Comics. They stupidly got a uh, divorce for some stupid reason. It was dumb. And I said, if they would have stayed married, you would have had an African royal superhero family. Yeah. And Lord help us all if they have some children right. and bring into some breathe some new life into that landscape. There's no such thing as that in comics right now. Hmm. And like I would read a book if it said the T'Challa family or you know, whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> and if Storm and Black Panther and kids showed up to a problem. That's that's the Incredibles I want to watch and see. Right. And I would I would totally read that book. 
faithfully if they wrote it right. But that was the problem. They weren't, they wasn't doing it right. So uh, fan fiction and fan art allows me to kind of say, well, this is what should have happened. Wait a minute, Black Panther. Wait a minute, Thundercats. Why the hell? You got a dude named Black Panther, you got a dude named Panthro, Panther. both scientists. Why wouldn't you put those two together? And I can show you real quick. This is this is the kind of stuff where I'm like, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Why hasn't this happened yet? I don't care if they're owned by two different properties. Um, they could do a crossover. Black Panther. They do crossover uh -huh. event. Okay. <laughs> It, just, it, it made so much sense. So I'm like, what if, you know, you get you get this guy, you know, coming into the world and he meets Panthro and they, you know, get to know one another. They're cool because they're both engineers. They both do sciencey stuff. And of course, Panthro needs his help because, you know, the Thundercats are in peril and Lion O needs to be rescued. And oh, it just writes itself. It's so stupid that it hasn't happened. And yes. um, yeah, this is this is a poster set that I created from that kind of stuff to say, well, this would be dope. Um, <clears throat> you know, Panthro would get some vibranium armor. Of course you'd get, uh, hold on, that one has watermarks on it. <laughs> there we go, there we go. This one, uh, yeah, you get, you know, Black Panther facing against Mumra. Why not? Yes. But, you know, that's, that's where fan art says, you know, who's to say that I can't see this? And now that I have skill, oh. I can do that. I can show what that would look like in my mind, and I would love to read it. Um, of course, I ended this with Mumra being set free from his torment as a puppet of the ancient ones or ancient spirits of evil. So, yeah, uh, yeah, good times, good times. So, in a nutshell, that's where I'm at. I, I still do fan art. I'm still working on Tuskegee Airs. We just did this cool uh, black, black. Oh wait. Like history yes. tribute book, you know, for folks and people to collect. So we're still doing this book, working on issue five soon. And uh, hopefully I didn't talk too long. Awesome. Now, of course, yeah. you know, me personally, I love how versatile you are from going from drawing with regular drawing paper, doing stuff on there and sketching. And then also you're going to the digital format. Uh, but yes. you put your own creativity to it. Uh, where yeah. did you first learn? You, you talked about how you first learned how to draw, but where? how did you um, eventually cross over into the digital platforms? Well, first, my first influence, I should say, for drawing was my oldest brother. Um, back when I was like two, three uh, or four, he would go to school. I guess I, I, it was before I could go to school. So I had to be young. I had to be either, and my, my birthday is in August. So I'm trying to remember when that cutoff is, but um, I was young enough to where everyone else would go to school and I hated it. Mm -hmm. But in my frustration, I would sneak into my oldest brother's room and he would have drawings everywhere. And I would sneak one out and I put a paper on top of it, trace it, sneak it back into his room. And I would literally act like nothing happened. I never got caught for it. <clears throat> but until I started drawing what he drew, he was like, hey, man, how did you, did you go to my room? And stuff like that. But he couldn't prove anything. He couldn't prove anything. But the point is, that was the first person I saw drawing in my household. So, um, yes, I agree. I agree about that. Um, but I guess the, it wasn't until 99. I didn't touch any digital art until 99. I got my first uh, pirated copy of Photoshop in 99 from one of the gentlemen at Kinko's. I'm not going to say his name. But uh, yeah, he got me, you know, just a rogue copy of uh, Photoshop. All I cared about was learning how to color my work like the comic, comic books color their work. That's all I cared about. I didn't care about photo editing or anything else. That was the only thing I got it for. So luckily, uh, I think the next couple of months I met Greg and I got to put those skills to use. So that's what you saw in that rough book. <laughs> and so. And I got to shout myself out because I did help color flats on some of those pages. Um, <laughs> we did. could only afford one, one Wacom tablet. That had to go to the artist extraordinaire. So I was using a mouse on a Dell computer. <laughs> it was horrible. I like I wasn't really that good at coloring flats. Marcus was nice about it. He was like, yeah, man, it, it's not it's not that bad. 
I'm, I'm gonna do some touch up. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, but um, yeah, yeah, man, those were fun days, man. That's someone from our audience that that says paint tool side your uh, preferred drawing program. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That was introduced when I started working on Hero Cats. So um, someone said, hey, man, I was like, how do you ink so fast? And he was like, paint tool side. I was like, Kazunhaik, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> I had never heard of that software. So he was like, oh, man, that's what I use to ink. And sure enough, um, he gave me a, a copy of that. And I started playing with that. And definitely. Um, so and I, I have to show this because there's, there's people that wonder why. And I'm like, I use Photoshop. I've been using Photoshop for over 20 years. I can I can draw in Photoshop, right? I can draw it. This I have a walking tablet that I use, right? This is a digital pen tablet. It's pressure sensitive, right? It's supposed to work with software to let you do, you know, pressure lines. Okay. But Paint Tool Size is unique is their default settings just about um, allows for, and I'll get close on this one. It allows for me to get something this thin. And then without changing anything, I can go to that thick. So this thin, to this thick, and back. And Photoshop, I don't know what I would have to do. I'm pretty sure I would have to do some weird settings to make it work that way. But it doesn't work this way. Like I'd have to increase my brush. Look how big the brush is, first of all. This is the maximum size of the brush. If I started drawing in Photoshop, it would do this big, blur. you know, it'd still yeah. be pressure sensitive. But as big as the brush is, I can still go from this to back to this. I don't know any other software that works that way. I have my, uh, my iPad, I have Clip Studio, I have Procreate, and I cannot get them, maybe I'm doing it wrong, I cannot get those software to function with this kind of you know sketch to pressure uh, variety. It just doesn't work that way um, in any other software. So. I love it. I love that their default um, blending uh, water brush tool <clears throat> without me editing or doing anything. It does it, some software. If you if you put color right down and you start, you have a smudge tool. It will kind of like I guess muddy the pixels around, mm -hmm. but this doesn't do that. It literally blends the pixels. And when I did this at first, I was like, no way, what? And and I have to, I, in Photoshop, I have to mess around and play. They have a smudge tool. It's, it still sucks to me because it can lag. The bigger the file is, it can start lagging. And I'm like, this is this doesn't lag in this software. It's a very small software, very um, rinky dink. It doesn't do all of the things that Photoshop does. Um, but yeah, no lag and I can really blend um, color. This is all I was looking for was just sketch, Let's do some color. So, uh, but yeah, this is still after all these years. I think I got this in 20, 2012. I started playing with this, um, and it also inks really well. So you can create a little ink ink layer um, to ink, and it has, of course, the smoothing. The uh, you can adjust how um, stable, how much stabilizer you want, and like Illustrator you have these nodes. So this is not a vector software, but it functions very much like Illustrator does. And of course I can take this and I can bloat this line, I can pinch this line. So this is me inking in a uh, non-vector software and I can control lines and shapes and all that. So I was like, oh, this is what I want. I'm good. I don't want to do Photoshop right now. <laughs> so this is why I still use this software. It's super, super cheap for those that haven't heard of it. I think if you buy it, it's only like 40 bucks. Uh, it's a Windows only, as far as I can tell, uh, unless they've done something new. But um, super, 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 super um, versatile. And it was a Japanese software that got ported to um, English. And I still use it. I love it. And that's what you see me sketch with on a normal bit. But I've been working with Procreate as well. So I'm learning. I got to stay fresh with my learnings. Nice. Yeah. No. Greg, uh, another question from the audience. They were asking, uh, have you started like 
like mentorship opportunities to help writers um, that are interested in becoming into the writing field? And then um, after Greg answers that, he also asked Marcus, do you do the same for younger artists that are starting out to do like mentorships with you? All right, so first of all, I'm going to acknowledge the question asker because that's my little bro, Jaron Martin, you know what I'm saying, brother from another mother. But um, yeah, man, you know, I've been mentoring people. Um, I, actually, I've started uh, doing, uh, what's the word, editing. So I'm uh, offering people copy edits. And then I'm also, you know, like, if you want me to manage your comic or your children's book project, from the beginning. Um, I recently got with a guy and he had already got his art and everything finished and was now asking for some help with the script. And I, I realized I need to let people know that I can do like consultation in the beginning um, to kind of streamline and help you not, uh, you know, not fall into certain traps because getting art done is expensive. And if you, you know, if you are you still haven't like refined your story, then you can end up wasting money or having an unappealing story. So yes, I'm doing editing. You know, if you just need me to check your grammar, you know, suggest, you know, better ways to write stuff, I'm doing that. I can also manage your project beginning. Um, so it's far, you know, so those are my hard line things, but um, and I can speak for Marcus in this because I'm sure of this. Like we've been mentoring for 20 years. Like at like at anytime we learn anything that we learn, <laughs> excuse me, we're we're like really, really excited to share it with other people. Um, because we like I said earlier, we have a, a mind state of ownership. We want to own, we want to control our process. That's not born from us just waking up and being like, I want to be an owner. It's from us being used and abused so many times like, for the talent that you did, that we have, you know, um, I, I'm not going to go too far into it, but we like, since we've been hooked up, and I'm sure Marcus was probably getting this earlier because he's been an illustrator. I've been getting it earlier from the writing standpoint, but people like we had a guy who, you know, wanted to have like a hip hop clothing store. He asked us to do stuff for him. So, you know, he, he wanted Marcus to paint, you know, like paint stuff on the walls and he wanted me and our other friend to, you know, help promote and do these different things. And it's like, he wasn't, offering any money um we had to go through those experiences i'm not gonna bring it up unless marcus says yeah it. no i'm ready man i was ready to go i was ready to go i had to yeah. look at so, there, so hopefully no one else has to go through yeah you do. so like uh because i had realized he was kind of a snake you know what i'm saying marcus was still bright-eyed and bushy-tailed back then uh, you know so marcus went ahead and painted that stuff on the walls and so I was like, I would ask him, you know, because I talked to him like every day. So probably like two or three times a week. I'm like, yo, did that dude give you your money yet? And he like, nah, man, he hasn't paid. He said he was going to pay me on this day, pay me on that day. So finally, you know, he was like, yo, man, he, he paid me, but he, he didn't have the money, man. So he let me get like one of the, the sweatsuits. You know, from his store, it was like a velour sweatsuit. Oh! <laughs> and, and, and I was like, how you gonna pay rent with a sweatsuit? <laughs> <laughs> and th this is one of the, yeah. the the great things. Like Marcus went into that situation, you know, yeah. like I said, bright eyed and bushy tailed, but it only took that one time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he was like, yeah. nah, just like. We were we had like a little business. We were doing um, like we were doing logos for people, designing you know, business cards, yeah. and people was like snaking us with the money. It was you know, so it was like we learned real quick. Like you know what, half down, the other half when you know when you know when we're finished. Um, but yeah, so all these things that we've gone through, like I've helped so many people. I don't want to say help. I don't like that word. It makes me sound like I'm something 
special, but like when people need printing, I tell you where to go to get the printing. You know, uh, people need like good, reliable, low cost, you know, whether it's posters, whatever. We give people everything that we had to go kick and scratch to find because that's the way we can advance, you know, this movement. I consider this a movement. Yes. So, um, yeah, we're constantly mentoring. If you've ever come to one of our tables at any convention, pretty much, there's a separate, you know, there's people that come to buy. There's people that come to say hi. There's Dana. And other Dana, and who else? Yes. Um, there's two of uh, us. <laughs> yeah, the, the two Danas, uh-huh. Terrence. There's some people that just come and say stuff yeah. like, "Okay, what don't I have?" Right. And then they get mm-hmm. whatever right. they don't have. We have those, and then we have a separate group of people. A lot of them younger kids, but some you know older as well. And they're coming to ask us questions and to soak up anything that we you know we have to give and that's why like people a lot of times they be like man y'all table is always packed but it's because you know we're not just there to take you know it's like Mm. um, we have kids i call them kids because we're old but um you know like college (laughs) kids and you know that to this day they inbox you they're asking you questions you know and we keep that pipeline open so it's 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 more of that old school. It's not. It's not like we just have, you know, five set people that we mentor. It's all across the board. Right. I've talked like once we figured out how to, you know, win on these kickstarters. We started like, um, you know, like I've I've talked to tons of people and given them the blueprint, you know, to be able to, you know, have a successful kickstarter. So. It's like we're always trying to share. Not everybody listens. Marcus mm-hmm. knows. I get frustrated with that. I was like, I'm gonna start charging people yeah. because I spent five hours teaching you how to. You know, I think the part people want to do the stuff that they're good at, or they want to do the stuff they're that's fun to them. Yeah. But like some of that grind work, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like the web marketing looking you know like when you see somebody that's doing something that's cool figure out you don't have to feel it but you know figure out the mind state behind it and then figure out if you can do something similar to help you know ex- expand your brand um but yeah not everybody listens to everything we say that's fine but yeah if you ask we're we're definitely uh sharing and you know bringing up other artists like um if nobody knows when you do projects for us we pay you what you you know you tell us what your rate is if we want you then we're gonna pay you your rate we're not gonna try to haggle with you um and we definitely you know people come to me all the time like hey is this artist good you know and we let them know you know so it's like Mm -hmm. we constantly constructively constructively is important yeah 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 constructively yeah there, yeah, there ain't that's, no staring down because yeah. just like Marcus said, you know, it's like nobody is was great. You know, you're not born, you know, Michael Jordan couldn't dribble when he was a year old. You know what I'm saying? It's like mm-hmm. you have to build. So we're never interested in like tearing people down. Right. Mostly. We tear yeah. each other down sometimes, but <laughs> that's that's to build ourselves up. That's love though. <laughs> Like sometimes that's therapy. And man, I didn't mean that, dog. I just I just had a hard day. No, man, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, I hadn't, I hadn't been able to cuss nobody out lately. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Do, do your thing. Do your thing. Very therapeutic. Yeah, I mean, and that's, that's one of the things that I admire so much is, you know, the creators in the community that give back as much as they receive, right? Because that's so important. To like remember that, you know, like you mentioned, this is a movement in a community and for all of us to advance, um, you know, we got to turn around and look back and see, you know, who else needs help too. Yeah, nothing is promised to us, man. So yeah, if we can inspire, you know, like if somebody's inspired, like I love it, especially, you know, watching people that are inspired by, you know, Marcus's art. Mm-hmm. or you know our story like i've had people like 
And I'm not talking about even, you know, like I'm talking about established people in the business that said, I saw what y'all did with this. And that made me want to, you know, start my own publishing company or made me want to, you know, bypass the major, you know, Mm -hmm. studios and do my own thing. Um, It was really cool because they did like, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, but they were doing uh, like they people were drawing, you know how they have Inktober and all that stuff. Yeah. They were drawing, um, you know, black indie characters for the month of February. And um, the, I think the day one, they, they were doing Tuskegee Airs characters. Nice. And I was just like, you know, I'm like over there, like, this is beautiful. <laughs> like, so, you know, just to think. Proud yeah, daddy or, moment. Right. Or when people right. come to your table, cosplaying your characters, Dana. Um, <laughs> or I saw Violet. I think Jill is on. Mm-hmm. Violet. Violet yep. has come to our table. Violet came to our table at BlurCon, and we we see her. And if you guys know Violet, she's adorable. I think she's about eight right now, mm-hmm. eight or nine. Yeah, and she's. In in one day, she'll cosplay like five different characters. Five different so characters. you kind of get yeah. to the point where it's like, look, it's Violet again, and now she's this. And so she came as Gina, one of our characters, and I'm sitting right there talking to her and just having so much fun, and it never registered. And one of my friends who was actually, you know, sitting, because that's another thing. If you're part of the crew, then you can come to our table sometimes if you just need to sit down and rest. Uh, so my friend is sitting there and she like elbows me real hard and she's like, look stupid. And I'm like, oh, oh, she's dressed as Gina from Tuskegee. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, why is why is and we're like little kids again, like every time. So when you're able to inspire people, man, it means everything. Somebody yeah. took the time to create a costume to be one of the characters that we came up with in our minds. Mm-hmm. Never gets old. Exactly. Ever. Right. Now, another question from our audience: Someone asked, um, "What are your got? What are, are your thoughts on San Diego Comic Con throwing a special edition con on Thanksgiving weekend?" Did that happen? They're, yeah, they made the announcement this do. week. They're, yeah, they're oh, to do it. I was gonna say I didn't hear about that at all. Um, how's that gonna work? What are they doing in person? That's what they said. Mm-hmm. Okay. For Thanksgiving. And that's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, are you saying, like, what, what do we think about them doing that? Or do about it, it doing it over, or? yeah, having it in person um, over Thanksgiving weekend. <laughs> hey, man. Um, I think, because I, a lot of the, a lot of the cons, they're asking. They're asking vendors. Yeah, you know, they're sending out emails. They're trying to, you know, feel, you know, put out feelers to say, what are you guys comfortable with? We would want, we want to do something. What are you comfortable with? Mm-hmm. And they're getting responses from people saying, you know, yay or nay. So I assume that, like everybody else, every other convention, they're probably they've gotten enough feedback to say, well, we've gotten this many hundreds of people, vendors. That's it, or vendors and attendees alike. That would love to do it, and they're not afraid anymore. Maybe they got vaccinated. Who knows? So, I would assume if they got their feedback, I can't. I can't knock them. Um, yeah, most me and Greg. Me, me and Greg were looking at uh, some some space helmets uh, <laughs> online. No, he he's not joking. We found I'm not them. joking. It really well, looks no, like that. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. a little expensive, but um, and, and with yeah. those special gloves that you can still grip, but you got your hands protected. Correct. I will yeah. be as pale as Michael Jackson when I come out of the convention, but um, <laughs> no, we're serious. It's like, we'll write that off as a business expense. Exactly. Um, it is. It is. As, as far as San Diego, it's weird because I am not beholden to Thanksgiving. Um, it's a trash holiday for me, but I do understand <laughs> the, you know, the, you know, how people want to, you know, spend time with their families it's you know so i get that part Uh, i'm not mad at that but i'm not like you know thanksgiving doesn't hold like a special place in my heart or anything um i will say that that's going to be 
like if like let's just say that things are close to normal that's going to be like a cluster bomb mm. because there's already so much travel happening at that yeah. time mm -hmm. um but it you know there's a lot of people in california i would expect for the first one that you're probably not going to have people traveling from all over the world it's probably going to be more community based um like it started off you know mm -hmm. so i think it can be okay like marcus said and we're getting that um you know because like you said we do six million conventions a year so a lot of the conventions they're reaching out and you know asking you know are you guys comfortable if there was a convention held in blah 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 month how comfortable would you be to attend so um you know it's she said among us <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah so like i get it i i think there was like that there's an there's an immediate backlash to things anytime somebody's talking about getting together in a group um but you know like from based off of you know these predictions or whatever unless we have like some type of major setbacks you know towards the end of this year you will be looking to see a lot of stuff will be back open yeah right. biggest part is that second wave with these uh, mutated um, these viruses new strains. yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's the that's the thing right now. Yeah, hence this hence the space helmets, which is you know, I think <laughs> and those we, special I think gloves. People, right, I think if people go with um, you know caution in mind, and you know, you know I I mean, but literally, if you if, for those that haven't been to a convention, you know, you're you're shaking hands with people, you're sitting next to people that cough all weekend. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's 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 not a germ. Uh, clean place. I don't know what the word is. Yeah. It is not a, a place where you go to hopefully not get... There, there's an actual term, for those that didn't know, called con crud. Yeah, it's actually right. a crud. term. Mm -hmm. It's a real thing, which is... And then when someone says, oh, man, I got hit with con crud, we, if you're a con goer, you're like, ah, oh, I got you. Dang, it sucks. All right, man, vitamin C, sleep. <laughs> Lots of this. I, you know, um, it's sad. I think that me and Marcus had built up an immunity because we had done, we were doing so many conventions. Like we yeah. had like a solid immunity, so people would be like dying around us, and we'd just be like, "Where are we going next week?" Um, <laughs> but then we got sick. Like, that's like we kind of think that um, you know we've we've actually thought we may have got COVID. Uh, back January. in the end of yeah, uh, in January because uh -huh. we was like done. Um, we when we when we went to Harlem and uh, yeah. it was bad. And I was sick. Marcus was super sick, and um, it was bad. It felt like the flu. It felt like the flu. Yeah. But then it turned out to be one of the worst flus I've ever had. If it was, you know, if it wasn't COVID, man, that. I was contemplating a lot of things. I let my kids stay at my mom's house. Once I got back, I was like, I don't want you. If, I, if it's something like the flu, y'all stay over here. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll get you once I get healthy. And I literally nursed myself back. But I, you remember, you, I remember where you had to get in the, in the, in the tub. It was cold water and ice. I did that. <laughs> to get I your did that. But it's weird. down. Yeah it's, yeah, it's weird when you do it when there's no one else in the house. So you don't know if you're going to make it. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, "Yeah, this could be it. This could be it." Well, you know, yeah. And you know, but it was that painful. I was like, "Whatever makes this stop." Yeah. Let's just do that. Let's just bring it on down. But yeah, it was it was bad. I was not I was not a happy camper. Um, yeah, because it could have been. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause that's the thing. I'm like, I don't know if the con world is ready to have con crud and COVID together as yeah. one. That's, oof. that's a hard combo right there. Yeah, because there's some you people know. that they 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 they, they know how to shower or anything pre COVID. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Please wash your cons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like we have the mask. So I saw a thing um recently, and I am not a scientist or a doctor. I have good friends that are. Um, but I saw a thing recently where they were talking about, you know, will the masks stay at, even after, you know, 
COVID is not as big of a threat anymore where we still wear the mask. And you think about it, like, I haven't had, like, a cold, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, since that January. You know? Exactly. Like, yeah. You know, um, so a lot of the germs that normally get passed around. So I can see myself, I might not wear it full time, but I can see myself, you know, keeping a mask on me and because it does get a little stinky in there. I don't know how yeah. to Ooh, say, Lord. say it. Um, it can get stinky. In fact, I kind of miss that thing. Um, I don't. That's you miss I don't miss that. Don't miss that. that. Marcus, remember we were at AWA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, fight each other. See, that was a I mystery funk. I was literally didn't even make like, sense. Doing like this, like, because me and Marcus, like, yeah. bros, like, <laughs> so if I was like musty, Marcus can say, "Yo, dog, you stink," and then I would go correct <laughs> it, right? But yeah. I'm sitting here like, this can't be my dog, and it was like invasive. <laughs> it wasn't like regular funk. No. It was invasive, and yeah, I'm like in my mind, I'm like. It can't be him. Is it me? You know what I'm saying? My daughter was there. I'm like, can just is, is that does daddy snake? And she's like, no, I would have told you a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> she's a great daughter. Um the, the, yeah. the problem was the problem wasn't that it was funky. It kept it would come it was like, ooh, and ooh. hit us. And then it would step and then back. it would disappear. And then right when and you it was like, okay, away, okay. <laughs> and it would come back. We didn't know what was happening. It was we thought it was a person. We thought it was people across from us. We couldn't pin it down. I was like, go, go, go buy something from their table real quick. Go look at their table. <laughs> See what's happening, man. It was it was a very <laughs> mysterious funk. Yeah. The location, I don't think we ever found the location or the source. Nope. But it, was it, did, it smelled like something may not have been alive. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> that. And you know, it's worse for us as photographers because we got to be in the crowds, Mm-mm. especially yeah. when they're at a concert. I have one yeah. experience that have been melted in my head, and I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> And I can't move because I'm photographing the concert at Anime Week at yeah. AWA. And I'm like, and I'm in yeah. this whole crowd of people. So I'm like, oh my God. Hey, listen, I don't want to disparage AWA because it's a great convention. It's, yeah. like, you know, Atlanta has three really, really, really good conventions. Yes. AWA is one of them. So mm-hmm. don't think that. The entire AWA stinks. No, if you're it's just artist, like all cons. You have that select. Yes. Yeah, we're we're just talking about particular instances, but yes. <laughs> we've been all over the world, man. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, all over the country. And, but yeah. consider this as a little bit of mentoring. If y'all ain't y'all ain't dealt with it yet, yes, just listen. Now we look at one day we're gonna be able to look back. Uh, you know, you know. These are, these are the things that you learn. You didn't, mm-hmm. people aren't ready for that. Yes. Uh, Ooh, Lord and hopefully we yeah. adopt like they have in Asia, like when you're yes, sick, everybody wears you. their mask. I was just going like, to say that, let's, Dana. Let's, let's keep that going. Last it's like, okay, mask, you get yeah. a cold, you feel a little sniffles, yeah, put, put that mask, mask on. on. Yeah. How hard My only it? thing, and this is a real fear, I don't even want to, oh. it might sound a little bit funny, but as a black man, a six foot two black man at that, walking around with a mask, when COVID yeah. is not a threat, uh, yeah, you know, I'm gonna be because I see cops now. They be looking like, ooh, boy, I, I ought to. I was at uh, FedEx today mailing something, and the cop was there, like walking in, and he, I know, he, I know, he was giving me that look like, mm, I'm gonna arrest you for being suspicious because I had a mask on, but everybody's wearing masks right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's crazy. I think about that a lot, honestly. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, we sure. walk into the, because I used to, you know, I go to the post office a lot to mail comic book <laughs> orders and stuff. Moana knows this. Uh, <laughs> and Marcus knows this. But um, yeah, you know, like me and my brother, we, we'll go in there like late at night so we can, you know, mail packages and not have to be bothered with anybody. And yeah. just remembering how scared people, like, Somebody would walk in and then they automatically tense up, you know, like um, clutch their purse, like all that kind of stuff. So are they is this helping them right now to not be as uh, racially profily? Like, how's it going to go? Like, they're like, what do you got that mask on for? Well, we just recently came out of a pandemic, Karen, and 
trying not to die. Like, there's, you know, I wonder these things. And I don't think. I want to show you. I want to really show you what I'm excited to do. I want to show you what I'm excited to. And I'm mad that they sold out. Listen, I want y'all to know. I can call, I can pass this off as cosplay. Let me share. Let me, I got to stop show sharing. Show me your helmet, so dog. Share. Why you don't be showing people your helmet? Because, man, I'm not. I, I got to get the whole thing ready together, man. Just hold on. Okay. What good is finding that, that, that helmet if you're not going to use it? Coward. <laughs> Coward. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. You see this? This is a real life product. It's sold out, unfortunately. This is off of um, his machine, uh, 56.com. This gentleman, this is a $600 plus dollar helmet. I know that it doesn't have technology in it. I know this. I don't care. If I can get this and walk around, look at the, look. Can y'all see this? Yes. You see this, this, this G.I. Joe uh, snake eyes and spot? You see this? Ah, <laughs> yeah. You're telling me if I can buy something like this for $600 and then pass it off as some sort of, oh, you know what? I just bought it because I'm trying to protect myself from COVID. I want to walk around looking like this. This is dope. This is dope. <laughs> this is, yes, I will wear this. And say that I'm in the future. I'll buy the yep. hoodie to go with it. Because <laughs> no, I'm not joking. He sells the hoodie. I'll buy this hoodie and walk around just like that. Oh, that's great. Kids. But um, yeah, look at these. Look at these. Look at these. And I'm all sold out. To me. Yeah. 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 That. Would I wear the? Yes. I will absolutely. I mean, I, I ride head. motorcycles, so I'm I'm not a stranger to helmets. See, you didn't say. Listen, you didn't say lose kindred spirits now. <laughs> bring up all that. I miss my motorcycle. Greg probably is the only, per, only other person that understands. I'm I'm now a civilian, but I used to be a pilot. I used to ride a motorcycle very, uh, very criminal. vigilantly. Driving around vigilantly. in between lanes and yeah. I wasn't up. I wasn't dangerous. Speed I did speed. do that, but I wasn't dangerous when I was doing, <laughs> doing what you wasn't doing uh trying to do wheelies on on the That's not that that's mean? not that, that wasn't me. I, I did it on a, look, I did it on an exit ramp. That's different. I did it on an exit ramp. <laughs> I hold oh, silver. So I cool. hold silver. Yeah. And then I just come down and then I get on the highway. That was different. It's totally different. That was like you know celebrating call, that I got off you of know work. What they call bikers, yeah. bikers in the ICU. Remember that movie? Oh, wow. Man. Yes. <laughs> Oregon, Oregon donors. Yes. <laughs> Those are oh, the bad bikers. Terrible. We don't talk about that. <laughs> it was so terrible. What was it called? I don't remember. Who cares? Biker boys. Yes. Yeah, yeah, biker boys. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's odd. But yeah, man, I missed those days. What kind of bike did you have? This is a tangent, complete. I didn't know you were sitting amongst. Oh yeah. What you doing with a stick? Listen. Yeah. Listen. How about say what you doing with a jig? How often do you ride it? Man, I haven't ridden like for a while. The last time I rode was. Um, Baltimore Comic Con, the last time to get the bike up into our booth. Um, so that was, what's that, late 2019? Okay. I haven't ridden since then. Mm, yeah. So I'm sorry to say. Now, how often was that because of COVID or just you was busy? No, nah, it's just we've been so busy, you know, like on the business okay. side that okay. we have to okay. be a um, All right, I'm yeah, not going to label there. you then. So I have this label. <laughs> so I, I rode, and Greg can vouch for this, I rode a motorcycle at one point. In my life, I had a car. I actually had two cars. I just chose not. I had a Mustang. I just chose not to drive it because I had a motorcycle. I rode for seven months, seven months straight. I'm talking about rain. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about cold. I'm talking about summertime. I'm talking He's about not wind. I'm mm -hmm. not joking. I had I had the gear for it eventually. Mm -hmm. I bought all the gear for it. But uh, it, it, what I learned was. And I use this analogy. If you knew someone who only drove their car when it was sunny yes. or the right conditions, yes. how good at driving would they be? You know, and I'm like, listen, man, I, I didn't want to be that person. So when I see someone pull up to the gas station and got these little clusters and I'm looking at, they ain't got no scuff marks on their boots. They got, right. You know, their tires are all pristine and clean. I'm like, oh, the fairies are out. Nice. <laughs> They only come out when it's pristine right. and rainbows and perfect conditions. And here I come, I roll up, I had like scuffed up everything, man. It was every day. And I would, you know. This dude would pull up, he pulled up 
at a business meeting <laughs> with a, a whole like Easter suit on, riding a motorcycle with a helmet. <laughs> I'm like, you do have a car. Remember, you have. A- <laughs> So he had the love, Easter love, suit. Love. You said the Easter suit on. I had a Joe <laughs> suit. Easter suit, but I did go to work like that one day though. I tore. I like. I tore the, the. You know the inner lining, the little silk, silk yep. little inner lining of the suit. Yep. I tore that all the way up. <laughs> I didn't know any better. I didn't know it was gonna do like a flag. And <laughs> so you're just and it's flapping in the wind. I was just. I was just like, I'm trying to get to work, and I had you know church shoes on and everything. I get there. My lining of my suit is like hanging. I'm like, oh no! <laughs> All right, <laughs> I won't do that again. I love, 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 love that motorcycle. I miss it. An elderly lady took her from me too soon. She hit it in the parking lot. Oh, At least she told. She told me. She told me uh, that she did it. It didn't make me feel any better though. Right. She's like, I hit your motorcycle. I was like, no, no, no. My motorcycle was parked. She's like, yeah, I hit it. I was like, no, no. <laughs> No. no why? She didn't hit it. She damaged, like tried to kill it. She ran over it. Oh man! She and then she reversed it. and did it again. She reversed and she reversed. Thinking, <laughs> I, I don't know how to. I, in my mind, doing the autopsy, I thought Sacrilege. she she pretty much hit it and said, "What was that sound?" Oh, I guess it was nothing, and kept going, and then came off of it and was like, "Oh no, my motorcycle." And then, yeah, it was, it was terrible. Oh man! So I haven't had I haven't had one since, and um, I'm waiting to build an Iron Man suit first, so I can yes. protect my bones, right? I'm saying and I'm gonna get it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my husband and I were just talking about that. Like, you know, when we do get back on, it's like you're thinking about it much differently now because you know. the bones are much older. I just want to protect my bones. I only get one pair. Um, but yeah, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. So I had a helmet, a cool helmet, and then I have Iron Man suit kind of frame going. It'll be dope. I'll be ready. And I'll show up show up to the convention like that. Uh, you selling your Jixer, by the way? But no, I'm, okay, we can get back to the thing. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Marcus, do you remember that time I uh, did the April Fool's joke on you <laughs> about the motorcycle? Wow. <laughs> what did you I, call, I call him. I was like, "Yo, man!" Like, so I, you know, at my job, like, I was actually um, in a finance job, and we would have to repossess motorcycles. So I looked oh, at, yeah, you know, like the that. coolest. Yeah. It was like a jixer. I, and I, I, I called you. him. I was like, "Hey, man, my uncle <laughs> is trying to give me a motorcycle," and uh, <laughs> and I, he was like, "What kind?" And I told him, and it was so funny because at first he was like. Ha, ha, ha. And then he got serious. He's like, "Wait, what? Bro, <laughs> you don't even know how to drive that, man. You're gonna right. have somebody to teach you how to drive." <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Really excited. I don't even know why he did that. It's not. It's not funny. <laughs> anyway. Look at your face when I told you I was April Fools. It was priceless. Because <laughs> I know in his mind he was like, "This fool ain't gonna want to drive this bike. This thing that I bike. You know, that's what he was thinking. Good fun." <laughs> It wasn't fun. I didn't remember that. Yeah, I remember that. I didn't, I didn't enjoy it at all. It wasn't fun at all. It's great stuff, man. Yeah. Um, so I forgot to mention this is uh, my redesign of static. Um, I did a I did a piece uh, earlier uh, on my iPad. I didn't even put it on this one. It's on my iPad. I was just. Because you know, milestone is relaunching. Uh, mm-hmm. If they haven't already, have they already come out with it? The static mm-hmm. book. I know it's coming out soon. Or maybe it's coming out this this next month. But um, yeah, um, I have my own personal visions of what I think static could be as a as a you know if they reboot the series and mm-hmm. um, yeah, man, I, I want to see static doing some really cool stuff. Um, yeah. And, and it, it's it's frustrating. So. Every time I said it, I've said this to like five people this past week, and everybody reacted a weird way. So I've been studying electromagnetism online. Mm-hmm. See? Right? And uh, everybody's like, what? Why? Because like, I like science. Leave me alone. What's wrong with you? Because mm-hmm. I like to study stuff. Um, but it's, it's weird because uh, I found a video. Uh, the guy, I think the show is called Because Science. 
and this guy with this long long hair, but uh, he breaks down a lot of comic comic sci-fi stuff and applies real science to it. <clears throat> really cool stuff. And he's going on. His focus is Magneto. Mm -hmm. And he starts off with saying, you know, he's disappointed in Magneto because all of the cool things he doesn't use his powers for, but he has access to if he knew how to use it or if he, you know, the writers knew what the hell they were talking about. And it, it just, it started me up down this path because some of the power. So Magneto, just as one thing, you know, can do exactly what Charles Xavier does. Mm -hmm. Right? Because what does Charles Xavier do? He uses tele te 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 telepathy, telepathy, mm -hmm. whatever, uh, you know, and controls people's minds. Magneto can do the exact same thing because we there's actual science that says you can control someone's limbs using electro, mm -hmm. elect uh, electromagnetism. Yes. You can do, uh, you can actually, uh, they're using it to uh, fix depression in people. They're also mm -hmm. using people to, you know, you can literally uh, make someone forget something, right? Using that. So complete mind control, right? Mm -hmm. All this cool stuff, but electricity and magnetism are one and the same. So static is magneto, mm -hmm. but no one writes him that way. He did levitate uh, the, man, the man cover in the comic because that's metal, I guess. So mm -hmm. yeah, they got the concept, but his powers range just as amazing as Magneto's. And you can do all of these amazing, cool stuff. Um, just really, really frustrating. So the more I learned, the more I was like, oh, snap. Static could be dope. And I'm just not confident that they're going to go with the scientific -y angle. And he, you know, the character, Virgil, was considered a nerd when the comic came out or even when the cartoon came out. He's supposed to kind of resemble a Peter Parker story. Um, but yeah, he loves science. He loves technology and all this good stuff. But writers have to know, because uh, I didn't know anything about electromagnetism, but you have to know what the powers are. That's why I love My Hero Academia. Um, Japanese writers go hard, man. It's just, yeah. I never thought. You don't think about these things scientifically all the time. But they were able to make a superhero high school cartoon, cool. Mm -hmm. And Disney tried to do that multiple times. It was trash. <laughs> um, wasn't interested in any of that. You know, a superhero high school. It was corny. It was you know campy. But here they are doing. I'm, and me and my kids are ready to go every every time a new episode, new season mm -hmm. is ready to go. We're right there because it's absolutely great writing. But the the powers are really really well thought out. And if they're not even at their full potential, the main character nerds out over the use of powers and how it can, how it can be used and how he can master it, how they, other people master the powers. So he has a journal and he's nerding out and documenting all the cool ways people's power works. So it's it's really, really cool, but that's, uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Again, fan art, um, this is not to say that what they're gonna do won't have scientific stuff because I haven't read it, but I hope that it, it, it goes down this uh, thing. But also Virg, Virgil had a, a Malcolm X had, him, <clears throat> you know, in the comic, very first comic that came out. And, you know, I can only assume McDuffie wanted to do something that infused, um, you know, really, really understanding and looking back to, you know, um, influential black mm -hmm. um, people and, 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 you know, African-American and further. And if it, connects with science, then you have this whole beautiful play box, toy box of things that could be in that story. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going and uh, I might have to write some little paragraphs and I know that's wrong, I shouldn't do that. Because every time I do that, people won't leave me alone. This shirt right here, uh, this series, this fan series. Listen, it needs Dana, to be, needs to happen, needs to happen, needs to happen. People don't, people won't leave it alone though. They don't know how to stop, like I don't own it. I we need, I need Nickelodeon just to make it happen because you know the creators went ahead and now made that official announcement that they get to make the whole world. So they need yeah. we need to go ahead and get y'all connected yeah. so they can make a world with a boy. Uh, yeah, Aboye and, and and all of that. Yes, yes, right there. Uh, yes. The problem is I wrote some story. I wrote some backstories on these folks, mm -hmm. on these wonderful people. 
Yes. <laughs> and uh, people won't leave it alone. They're like, so when you're yes. doing that comic? Exactly. I can't, I can't do a comic on something I don't own. Um, I would be happy to Unless sell get that show. You get the approval from them and say, go ahead, do it. And this will be, point, uh, this be yeah. another universe of the Avatar. <laughs> I'm totally okay with that, but they got to get me to go ahead first. I got to sign some contracts, and they got to give me some creative, some creative control, and I would be happy to invest. Well, well uh, now that they got complete control oh, of the a Avatar universe, then that can happen. They can make that happen since now they fought for complete control. <laughs> yes, yes. So if anybody knows them, tell them to call me. Um, I got some stuff. And this was just this was just a fan idea to say if you turn that little map at the beginning of uh, Avatar: Last Airbender, um, and and there's an undiscovered African-like continent, mm -hmm. um, Ab Abiyoye would be the next Earthbender. It'd be a brand new place, uh, wonderful, just as much wonderful culture, music, martial arts, uh, adventure, places to visit, everything. So um, you know, it was it was pretty. Uh, it was like a no-brainer to me. This is what yes. I would love to see. Um, and he would be uh, exclusive to bending gold, would be his specialty. So he's on the run from his local king and all that good stuff. But yes. come on. did this stuff. I didn't notice that cloud had an African shape in it when it happened. Someone pointed <laughs> oh, that out. Right. And I was like, for real? Oh, snap. You know, the cool. fans will point it out to you. <laughs> did you do that on purpose? <laughs> I see. I don't, I don't believe in lying. I'm like, no, I didn't do that at all. <laughs> I don't mind telling the truth about those things, but yeah, yeah, this is what I would love to see. Yeah, but wow. I just, yeah, I keep, I keep writing fan stuff, man. But this is, this is what's fun for me. This feeds my creativity, mm -hmm. and no one can tell me that it's wrong because it's not. That's not why I'm sharing it. I'm not sharing it to say mm -hmm. it's wrong. Proof of this. <laughs> it's okay. You think that. But it don't matter to me. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, I think that's a good place. Um, another cool one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop. He, the dude said Magneto could have this putty, right? And if he infused the putty with, you know, a whole bunch of magnetic powers, just some shavings of something that was very highly magnetic, um, and he infused that with this putty. Then he can manipulate this 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 putty in any way he needed to, you know. He can make tools, weapons, projectiles. He can cover someone else with the putty and control those those. I was like, oh, this is good. This is good. Um, Magneto, you know, the way they show Magneto, he's just levitating stuff, throwing stuff. Yeah. And Do is like that's that's ridiculous. He can create his own power for an entire continent um, if you rotate you know, um, magnets around a wire or, um, you know, something like that, it generates electricity. That's how electricity gets generated for most of the world and vice versa. If you generate, you know, uh, you know, um, certain, you know, certain metals uh, and you rotate them, they create a magnet, a magnetic, uh, 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 I don't say, say sphere, but, um, you know, it, it creates magnetism. So they're one and the same. It's just people don't, so now when you think about storm and it made me, it just, it blew my mind. I'm like, oh snap, storm manipulates the electromagnetic, you know, uh, she, you know, they call her a weather mutant, but yes. no, she actually has the manipulation of the electromagnetic um, thing around the earth and stuff. So she could also be like Magneto. Uh, mm -hmm. Generating electricity means you can generate magnetism. It's they're the same thing. Mm -hmm. But people, so that's why they changed it. It's now electromagnetism. So after all, I watched this two-hour thing that said the history of electric of electricity and the history of, and sure enough, they said, well, we can't call these two separate things. They're electromagnetism. Mm -hmm. So it's it was great. It's just taught me a lot of good stuff. So yeah, man, all of these uh, black electro-powered um, characters are technically, you know, able to be masters of magnetism as well. But what do you mean? There's right, more, there's nothing. more black power <laughs> with electricity superpowers? Are you serious? No. Yes. I didn't think so. Sounds like <laughs> cool, man. There's so, like a million yes. of them. 
<laughs> yeah, so. And I don't know if that would make Static darker, but, you know, in, in my mind, he'd be in his 20s. And, you know, if he's if he's a science lover and he's been really studying and working on his craft and his, his powers since he was a teenager, uh, it'd kind of be like that um, Into the Spider-Verse Spider-Man that had been doing it for a duration. Uh, but let's just, even if it was 10 years, if Static had been, you know, a vigilante doing his super stuff for at least 10 years, and he's, you know, learning, he's still a science head, he's still uh, hooking up with people that are helping him learn how to craft, you know, perfect his powers. Uh, yeah, man, he would be a force to be reckoned with if he understood science. So I think he would be a really, really dope book. But I, I'm, I'm put, I'm bringing back that, you know, uh, uh, Malcolm X badge. Uh, he's wearing that, he wears that. Um, learning history. And this is, of course, a correlation with me and Greg to uh, Greg's mm -hmm. book, uh, Search for Sadika. You know, infusing history seems mm -hmm. like it's if you're not doing some sort of head nod to where we come from and, and what what giants came before us, and you're putting out a product that young people may grab. Yes, it has black representation, but what are they getting from it? Is it entertainment, or are they going to really learn something? You can put it in there because we, we call it nuggets for Tuskegee years. It's just a little nugget. You know this? You never heard of a, a, an Olmec head? Yeah. And adults, don't, there's adults that don't know what that is, Olmec heads. Right. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's okay, because it's not your fault. You went to school, graduated, went to college. If you didn't learn about it, it's not your fault, but you should have learned about it because it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it speaks volumes to where, you know, these ancient civilizations and the technology they found out apparently mm -hmm. uh, is something we can't create today. Um, not the way they did it. So yeah, that's where I'm like, I'm excited about stories like this, man. So we'll see. I gotta say uh, questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love how you talked about, you know, the nuggets and, you know, the homage because, yeah. you know, with Tuskegee Airs, you honor and pay tribute to real life American heroes and veterans from our own history, like Betsy Coleman and Benjamin o uh, Davis Jr. That tell us a little bit about these individuals and why did you select them for your story? Yeah, Greg. So you know. the, um, so the, that cover, uh, we didn't actually include them in the story. We wanted, we were doing, um, we were up for a print run and um, for issue two. And so what I wanted to do, I came to Marcus. We had another idea that was great. I had Marcus draw this mm -hmm. art. And then I realized that somebody had already done something similar to it. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> we switched it up and um, we went this direction. And it was really just to honor so many times the Tuskegee Airmen, like people think <clears throat> Tuskegee Airmen were the first black pilots. That's not true. They were the first black pilots that fly for the military in the United States. Yeah. Like there are people that paved the way for them. So, um, you know, I, I, there were so many different people to choose from. Um, we just kind of, you know, truncated. And so what we did is we put five on the cover and um, that's uh, Eugene Bullard, uh, Willa Brown. So Eugene Bullard was the first black man, you know, like black fighter pilot. He's from, I, we didn't even know at the time, but when I started researching, uh, he's actually from Georgia. And he, he left Georgia, he went to Virginia and hopped on a freighter and, you know, ended up in, in England where he boxed and he did some other, uh, you know, just kind of all around kind of thing. They were performing and doing different stuff. His boxing took him to France. He got to France and he was like, I'm staying here. And so uh, when World War I started, I remember the Tuskegee Airmen actually took flight in World War II. Uh, World War I started, uh, he joined, and he was a machine gunner. And then he was wounded in battle. So he applied to be a machine gunner for, the, you know, for their Air Force. And he ends up getting his license and actually flying missions 
in World War One. So this is, you know, way before. Um, where's my book? At least I actually put the uh, years on them. I think. Do, 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 in night, yeah, nineteen seventeen. So you know that predates the Tuskegee Airmen by, you know, a little bit over 20, 20 years. Um, so we we used Eugene Bullard, Bessie Coleman, who is oh, I'm on the big screen now. Bessie Coleman was the first black woman to obtain a license. She couldn't. They they weren't letting black women get licenses back then. So she actually had to um, go to France also. Mm -hmm. And um, so she got her <clears throat> pilot's license and then she got an international pilot's license. Um, and uh, another cool fact um, that we found out is that she was part Native American. Um, so, you know, she's a black slash Native American woman and she's the first woman to get her uh, pilot's license, black woman woman of color, however you want to say. That's Willa Brown right here. Uh, she's the first black woman in the United States to get her license. Um, I learned a lot just by this researching these people. Um, we get a lot of times, you get like a, a, a grumpy person that doesn't really understand that our book is in the future. So they'll say, you know, those comments like, oh, there were no women there were no women pilots back then. And, you know, misogyny, misogyny, misogyny. And um, so now I can actually point out that this woman, you know, got her license, actually helped to create a school in the Chicago area. And they taught black men to fly. A lot of the black men that went through that program actually ended up going through the Tuskegee Airmen program. So, not only did we have them, but they were teaching men how to fly. You know what I'm saying? So I can't wait to get back into the conventions so I can snap on people with that information. Because, <laughs> um, you know, as a as a man, you know, with a daughter and, you know, like nieces and a stepdaughter, like all these people, these young ladies that are awesome, you know, we, you know, we're putting these characters in for a reason. And then you still have people with those mind states which is that women can't do well stupid this lady was doing it before you know a lot of men were doing it um down here i always get confused because i'm going backwards this is james herman banning uh he was the first black man to fly um coast to coast in the united states he flew from uh, los angeles to long island new york uh it took him like 21 days to make the trip <laughs> Uh, they actually him and he had a, a you know a sidekick with him. They were they called themselves the flying hobos, and they would like touch down in different places and then raise money to uh, you know fix up the plane uh, for fuel and all of that. And that happened in uh, maybe I didn't put it. Oh, nineteen twenty nine. Okay. Um. So again, like all of this stuff was happening way yeah. early. And then that's Benjamin O. Davis, mm -hmm. who was the Tuskegee Airman. He was the commander of the Tuskegee Airmen. Um, he, by, by the time it was all said and done, he was a four-star general yep. in the United States Air Force. Um, mm -hmm. He also, after World War II, he actually in Korea, he went on to command, you know, multicultural, uh you know forces mm -hmm. so he it wasn't just black he was you know uh bill clinton gave him the you know his fourth star like in the late 1990s but like there's no doubt in my mind that he should have been he should have received that honor you know 30 40 years prior mm -hmm. um an amazing man um but yeah so that's what this one was we call it uh pioneers in aviation celebrating the legacy but they're not in the actual story this is a reprint of issue two um we have a few of these left this was like the we call this the vintage one we actually signed all these copies as it's you so beautiful see. and uh yeah and so we um we have a few of these left 
because we only printed fifty. Um, yeah. And then Dana would Dana would have bought it, and um, you know, <laughs> as soon she as was, Dana, she was, yeah, she was, Dana, Dana, you can only buy five at a time. If we was at the table, we would have had to stop Dana. Uh, and I, I mean, but that's. There's, there's amazing people um, like you guys that, um, you know, that have kept us, kept us continuously trying to be creative and, oh, you know, because, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Go on the show. Go on the show at the end. Yeah. Okay. Trying to avoid this ring light. Was that the poster? Um, this That's is a poster. <laughs> I don't have that. Okay, I got to write that down. But this is also that is that, oh, is that the poster? <laughs> I don't think we have this up online because uh, we were just, you know, fooling around with it. But this is the yeah. color cover. Uh, the yeah. book is available online. Yes, Dana, we'll get you a poster. Okay, um, I will both of y'all to autograph it. I still gotta get Marcus to sign the other stuff that stuff. I did yeah. get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. And so, man, I yeah. just want to shout out real quick, Atlanta, like our um, our black geek yeah. uh, community. Like when uh, y'all y'all think you know we're just talking, like Dana be meeting me at the Popeyes. Like when I got like if I have like some Funko Pops for her or vice versa, or you know, sometimes she'll order something, I can be like, I can mail it to you. Like the last time she was like, Why didn't you just meet me and give me the and I'm like, Well, you probably like, you could have saved the postage and y'all could have used that for something else. She's like, You paid right. for postage. I don't care. Right. I could have met you at the Popeyes. Right. So I just want y'all to know, like, and I'm not trying to brag and say Atlanta is better than everywhere else. But what I am saying is, um, you know, we have some people, Dedrin, uh, there's so Evan. many, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I would, yeah. you know, Jabbar, like mm -hmm. there's so many people that support and we rock, we'll rock for each other, show up yeah. at each other's events. Um, it's really good, man. I would tell, encourage everybody to get like us. Yeah. I wish it was more like that over here. For sure. <laughs> where you We're going to make it like now? that, Moana. I'm about to say, Moana, where are you? Um, in the DC area. Okay. Yeah. Uh, look, we may be coming back to your city. Listen, we just gotta, we gotta just, we gotta force this. We gotta force this um, in a in a creative way, yeah. is what I'm thinking. Because it's mm -hmm. it's we have to do more outside of just the com Comic Con. Yes. And then, um, it, it really comes down to the creative ways to stay connected. Mm -hmm. uh, this talk, a lot of people. How do mm -hmm. I still engage? Why, if I can't leave my house, if right. I can't travel, how can I still engage? And, you know, I heard all, a lot of people just, you know, was, oh, well, but I mean, creativity, man. It's like, if you stay with solution oriented, you know, mindset, mm -hmm. we can come up with some creative ways to mm -hmm. do these things and stay. Mentoring could be year round. It's just, mm -hmm. we have to figure out a way to do that best. And the solutions are there. Um, a lot of times it's just how, how we get there. It takes some time to, to work out the kinks, but it's coming. I definitely see it coming, especially with a lot of the, um, the online tools and, and uh, virtu uh, virtuous kind was dope. Um, and, and what that could be with, with more technology, more innovation. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I will wear a, v I'll wear a VR headset if I can walk around a virtual place. And uh, sure enough, Point and click, look, with my, with my little, uh, where my headset at? My children got it. Yep. Let's see, HBCU Con is going to have something in April, so yep. you, everybody nice. can have that opportunity. And then in June, you're going to have something with Absoon um, having a convention, a yeah. uh, virtual convention for Juneteenth. So be on the lookout for nice. that. So you have that opportunities to be able to network and buy yeah. stuff from you know, Greg and Marcus and several other creators through those platforms. Mm -hmm. So definitely be on the lookout. We'll definitely be sharing that information uh, with our viewers and people who follow our Facebook page. So definitely be on the lookout because we definitely try to support the indie community. Absolutely. Yeah. Most definitely. Most so, you know, thank you, Ben, again. Um, but yeah, this this it's, it's a good, it's a beautiful community of people here, man. Um, yeah. I wish I could shout them all out, man. You guys um, fuel, you know, the, um, not just financially fuel, because that, you know, you can only say thank you about money, but for real, like, hey, man, that's that's a that's more than just a customer. 
at that point. You are, mm -hmm. you know, um, someone close to, you know, uh, our heart in the sense of saying, yeah, it came out of our head, but everything that comes out of my head, you're going to support me for real? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think, I, I think Just wait until I hit the lottery. Taste. I hit that mega millions. Y'all better be ready. <laughs> Listen, I've been go. ready. I was going to say, who's going to say no, Dana? Who's going to say I've been no? ready for that. <laughs> I'm going to have my own publishing division. I'm like, all right, y'all. It's time. She's going she gonna to be walking us around like a Jurassic Park. Dude, spare no expense. <laughs> spare, uh, Marcus, this is your wing over here. Huh? I get all of this. Yes, play the, uh, the Jurassic Park music. Exactly. <laughs> cool. You're going to be right next day. door to Moana. Moana and the Wild Card Chronicles is working over here. <laughs> right. You ha she has that wing with all of her creators. And then if you need some yeah. artists, just ping her. She'll ping you, you know, vice versa. Yeah. yeah. I'm down. I'm down. And Dana's not going to know when to stay. She's not going to stop. Um, nope. Like, nope, we're developing 16 new animated series. That's right. <laughs> That's what... <laughs> it'll, it'll be due in 2025. I tried to get exactly. it in 2024, but apparently people need to sleep. But it's okay. We're going to work it in. Like, you know, we right. do have bedrooms on the floors for those that want to keep yeah, yeah. working. And, you know, they have a whole suite for that. <laughs> yeah, we got the Google. I'm ready. Exactly. That's Our own version of Google. <laughs> Right now, Mark is just talking to the creators behind Avatar. They're working a whole new yeah, series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and look, and then just, just, just spin it all off. We'll just create reality shows around all of it. Yes. So it'll be kind of like Mad Real World from Dave Chappelle. Oh, um, my gosh. It'll be great. It'll be great. You know, um, and, and it, you know, I don't know acting wise, but, you know, we got to pretend that there's drama sometimes. It'll be great. Yeah. Like, Who ate all my cereal? I don't like working. Vaughn got my uh, frosted mini wheats. Greg, was it you? And Greg, um, act poorly. Yes, I ate all your frosted mini wheats. What you gonna do? <laughs> Stuff like Trash. that. Yeah, yeah. And but then Danny Quick will be like, here, you could have some of my cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Right. I'm not sharing anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah, because you got you got to pretend there's drama with those. Exactly. <laughs> we had a little cutaway scene. So how did it make you feel? And you know, yeah, for us, many weeks. I just don't understand. Man, I respect everyone in that house. I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Danny, Danny created this place for all of us. And you, you gonna steal my many weeks? And gotta, you know, we gotta make it good. We gotta make it. Good. Man, it sounds like you've been. Practicing. Nah, this is, I'm good. just saying, man. He's, he's got to <laughs> let it all out. What he's been holding in for stop. so long. Right. <laughs> Y'all, I have, now here's another thing. I have these really, really big, outlandish, ridiculous nerd ideas that I would absolutely pay $45 to access. Um, and I have to tell my kids, man, my kids will absolutely humor me. They will let me go the whole, and they'll add to, and they'll ask questions. But I'm talking like some big ideas, man, um, that I would love to spend money on. Um, it would cost no less than, than a couple million to get some of these ideas off the ground. I, I'm going I'm I'm to put this out here. Y'all can steal it because I don't have the investment right now. But the point is, so have you seen LARPing? Do y'all know what LARPing yeah, is? I, yeah, I've heard of it. Uh-huh. Okay, so... That is based on people dressing up, using their imaginations. They got little foam swords and they're hitting stuff. And if they're using magic, they throw bean bags at each other. It's hilarious. Go look it up on YouTube, y'all. Right now, LARPing, L-A-R-P. Look it up right now. It's hilarious. Now, my thought is bump that imagination crap. Okay, I'm talking. There's a huge airplane hangar size place. Okay, and you have actual life-size giant trolls. They're, they're puppets, but they're animated puppets. They're not animatronics, though. They are mm -hmm. suspended big enemies that you have to fight. You get, you get some weapons. You can actually hit them hard. But here's the caveat. This is where the adulting comes in. They can hit you back, and you will tumble. You will not just be... It's not like soft, oh, Fluffy hit me. No. The thing is like 
eight feet tall. And if it hits you, there's weight to it. And it's not going to break a bone per se, but it's going to knock you over. And uh, yeah, that's that's the whole place. The whole place is you may fight a boss uh, this round. You may fight uh, a raid boss next time. You may need five people. And yeah, hence dragons, real fire blowing out, not hitting you, of course, but the theatrics of it. And then you make that into a restaurant and people can watch, make it into a reality show people can watch. You can vote for your favorite champions. Listen, I don't have this much money right now, but I would go there and I would I would compete. I would love it. But uh, yeah, I mean, you have to have armor, head headgear to really protect your, your, your chrome, all that stuff. But yeah, yeah. Have, did you go try the Greg, board? way Greg is looking, it's like he's questioning <laughs> life and questioning you really bad. He's, he's probably scrolling on Instagram, man. Greg, Greg has heard these things from me. <laughs> he's, scrolling. he's like looking dead at the camera like and not blinking. He's just like, really? <laughs> Tell the truth, actually, man. He's scrolling. Actually, Marcus is, he, he's not all the way correct. I'm responding to a, a, a customer. <laughs> A customer that's like, where's my book that I ordered 30 minutes ago? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the kind of stuff, you. man. It's, it, but that's where my brain, it, it does that. And I, I, I'm, you know, I've come to, to learn to get used to it. But why, why do, why, why do these ideas play me? If I have to bring it to fruition, I will. But I can't afford a whole airplane hanger right now. You go and then have you heard of the zombie runs? Yes, I've I've heard of that. Um, you never did it. I have not done it. I know my uh, one of my photography directors from um, from one of the cons I photograph. Uh, she photographs the uh, the zombie conventions and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, I've seen the pictures of like I was like, so you're paying a bunch of people. To look like they're zombies to chase you and you run. So, so all that's right. as far as the creativity <laughs> started. That's the as far as the creativity got. <laughs> and how did there you pull hands. your hamstring? All right, so check it. These zombies, <laughs> these people that I paid to these zombies <laughs> chasing me. I was running. I ain't stretched properly. That's a terrible way to pull a hamstring. Exactly. That's how you know you're old, also when. Immediately when you start thinking about running, you think about pulling your hair. <laughs> yep, that's me. <laughs> Yo, I'm getting a bike, like a bicycle tomorrow. I thought you were going to say you were getting that Peloton. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want, a, I want a real bike, but here's my thing, y'all. I think it's going to be exhausting. Uh, Plus, Greg, you know I got that bike that one time. You make fun of me, man. I remember like, Marcus was like, so Marcus, this was back in our, you know, in our days, you know, Marcus had a jalopy, I like to call it, and it wasn't working so good. So he was like, I'm about to get a bike just so I can, I can ride to the store, like all that stuff. And I'm like, Brad, you need to go to the store. I'll come get you, take you to the, you know, to the store. And he's like, nah, man, it's going to be, I mean, it's also going to be a good way to get in shape. And he was like real excited and stuff, man. <laughs> I should have heard. I Listen, there's a lot I of hills in that county. I was going to meet him, and he got to pull up like on the bike, man. I have never. The only other time I seen him that exhausted was when we, we carried him when he was late for a flight. He, Remember he had, that one? <laughs> yeah. He had, like, yeah. He had like 60 pounds of posters on his yeah. back, and he's like right and, to the airport. And I'm like yeah. trying to get the people, like, he's on his way. Can you hold the door? Can you hold the door? And then he's like, Are they going to hold the door? I'm like, Yes, but you got to hurry. <laughs> <laughs> that dude sweated like for at least an hour, the first hour of the yeah. flight. Yeah. <laughs> It was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. It was pretty bad. I was I was racing the older lady. I didn't even care that she was winning. It was just the fact that you know I was trying to win. I was trying to beat her and I couldn't. I was like, you know what? Don't have, don't beat yourself up. But uh, yeah, no. Uh, riding a bike in Georgia. For those that don't know, uh, Georgia has like random hills, man. Yes, it makes sense. There's just hills. There's no uh, rhyme or reason to them. They just appear. Uh, <laughs> 
and they be like, they be like really slow inclining hills. So like, if you're driving, you won't even really notice it. But then you get on a bike or something. So I've already started thinking about those repercussions. <laughs> like um, I'm gonna start off small. Cause like I got friends, they be riding, like they'll go out on a Saturday and ride for like 40 miles. And it's like, yeah, that's not gonna be me. I'm gonna be like these little kids in my complex in the beginning. Just, driving know, around riding. the uh, the neighborhood of the complex. <laughs> yup. I gotta build my stamina up. As soon as you get out talking about you going to public, there's there's no I quit in the middle. You gotta make it or you gotta take a break. And you, you don't have to ride back up the Uber on the way back. Yes, yes. Hey man, I, you got a bike rack? Do you have no. a bike rack or a hatchback <laughs> where I can throw these? Yeah, I I I was no. really excited the closer it gets to me actually getting the bike. I'm starting to think about like all of the um the the re the real repercussions from it. Um so you make fun of me when I did, man. I'm just I'm I'm just I'm not gonna it's do okay. that to you, see? No, you I'm can't. Do that. I mean I, I was trying to deserve it, so I wouldn't be upset. Yeah. I wouldn't be broken apart by it. Oh, you're gonna I mean, be broken apart on that bike. Like a little uh skinny down at the bottom, man. Plus it's uh it's called perspective, man. It's on a necklace. It's moving. No, it's not. It's like, you know what, man? Just wait till it's done. <laughs> <laughs> wait till it's done. Skinny, skinny Africa drawing. <laughs> <laughs> He put that skinny yes. chain that you gotta be careful, or you're gonna break it if you if you yeah, wear it yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's coming. It's uh, it's a lot of good stuff. Uh, we're gonna uh, start on some new stuff, new books. Greg, you gonna write that children's book about that gentleman you just spoke about? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I was so enamored with uh, the story of Eugene Bullard um, yeah. that I feel like I need to do a the children's book form. So I got my uh, guy is already working on some character designs. Nice. I want to do it. It's going to be in a different style um, than my other children's books. Not mm-hmm. because I don't like that style, but because that's more, you know, that's Marcus's style. Um, so I want like this guy, he's got some really cool paint painterly oh, styles. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So we're trying to morph it. I wanted to make sure that I pay homage, man. Like, so, you know, we typically, you know, we get the slave stories and the oppression stories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there are so many people that were doing stuff like this man who, like he left Georgia, his mother passed away. Some people attempted to lynch his father. And so he, I think he was like 17. He was like, yeah, man, I'm out. I'm going to go think about, I'm gonna, like in 19... 19- 10 or something you're like i'm gonna go to europe you know to avoid this oppression Mm -hmm. that's what people were having to do in this you know and this is at the time when america was quote unquote great right (laughs) and so (laughs) for him to go there and then achieve so many things and you think about it um i was i've become a hamilton the play maniac uh, the musical, uh, and, but one of the things I read about Alexander Hamilton is he despised slavery because he felt like it was such a waste of talent and potential, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so you think a man who was able to go and be this, you know, be from everything I read, he was a really good boxer to go from that to being a really good soldier to being a really good pilot. You know what I'm saying? Like all these things that these people, that our people would have been doing just normal, yeah. just regularly. And it's all stripped away because you have to play, you know, second and third fiddle just because you're not white. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like, I feel like if I'm going to tell stories from history, then I'm, I'm going to tell those kind of stories, those yes fabric stories that, you know, helped us to propel, you know, us to the good things that we're able to do. Um, so, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, and, and <coughs> sorry, ironically, I was uh, talking to a friend last night and we were talking for a long time and just talking about, you know, how 
history has been used as as a weapon. And mm-hmm. you know, we were talking about how, like, when we were in school, I don't I don't remember us getting past Reconstruction, like in history class. And yeah. I was a history nut. You know, it was like they get you to Reconstruction, and then that's it. They don't, you know, they didn't talk about World War One, Two you know, the civil rights movement, all these other things that are just as important as the, you know, the, you know, the, what are they, the finding founding fathers. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's like, if we can tell some of those stories and tell the truth, yeah, you know, I don't have to, we don't, the the crazy thing is our people did so many great things Mm -hmm. that we don't have to, you know, make up, you know, right stuff like some other people do we don't have to uh, <laughs> we don't have to you know like muddy up the truth and yeah you know paint people out to be heroes because they're real freaking heroes yeah. Harriet Tubman was a real hero like she yeah. was probably the super superhero that's you know set foot on this you know one of them that's ever set foot on this planet you know what I'm saying so mm-hmm. it's like we could tell her real story yeah, like when I watched that movie, I was like, "She's a freaking superhero." Yes, know? and there's a lot of them. Yes, and so I'm I'm okay with telling those stories. Yeah, Greg and I are very much the same when it comes to the history stuff. Like, why why yes. do we have to make a fictional? There's so much true stories out <laughs> right. there. Exactly. Right. Yeah, because it was just like last month. Um, I, I told my boss what I wanted to do, and so she just like. <laughs> Go for it. Do do you? <laughs> and I put a I put a whole presentation for it was an a, event we were having and it was playing right before it started. And I had so many people like, can you send me that PowerPoint? Because I literally focused on all of the black uh, IT inventors that most people don't know about. So mm-hmm. I mean, I fo- you know one of them was you know Marie Van. Britton Brown, who invented the security system that we use today. She invented it because, and she developed the whole system that they use in the banks currently and everything. It was a black woman who did that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's like, most people, you know, they're saying that, they're like, what? And I was like, yeah, you know, she did that, you know, the, you know, as far as the, uh, the microphone that we have in our phones and camcorders and baby monitors was invented by a black man named James Edward West and stuff like that. It's like, we have these amazing people. I mean, there was a black woman, Dr. Patricia Bath, who developed the laser surgery for removing cataracts. It's like all these people have done these amazing things, but we don't hear nothing about them. Mm -hmm. And so Lily, I had so many people like, can you send me that presentation? (laughs) It's like, yeah, it's like, Uh this is, I only highlighted 10 people. I was like, I I, could have gone all day with this bad boy. (laughs) Yeah. And, and, and those are the things. And then there's like all the people, you know, like we, we were talking last night, we were talking about uh, Eli Whitney. Mm-hmm. And I remember they would always put that into our books, right? Yeah. And I, when I was a kid, I'd be like, so what? But then I understand. And now I feel like it's a slap in the face because the cotton gin yeah. being developed actually reinvigorated slavery because yeah. it was too tedious to have humans pulling seeds out of cotton. Yeah. You know? So they create when the cotton gin, which I have no doubt was created by some black people and this white man took credit. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yep. (laughs) Because think about it. They're the ones that, you know, would need it, right? Yeah. You know, because it's killing, like it's tearing your fingers apart. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, but I feel like they put that in sometimes as like, you know, since most people don't know, like it's a slap, it's it's another slap in the face because, you know, we're getting soured on, you know, cotton. Like, you know, yeah. look at this junk. It's it's too much, you know? And then, oh, now we need more people to pick it. So the cotton gin, I feel like, I feel, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being, you know, uh, really curious. But I think that they, you know, that's like a slap in the face for them to put something that seemingly minuscule in yeah. our book. 
and make you remember that junk. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, well, they had ingrained the whole slavery thing and that tied to slavery. So boom. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's but, what you need know, to remember. It's that, it's that <laughs> secret thing where it's like, you know, oh, they did y'all a favor, but really uh -huh. they didn't do us a favor because mm -hmm. now they, you know, needed more slaves. It's yeah. a lot, man. It's a lot. Uh -huh. And, uh, I kind of want to erase the, the the reaction of oh for real word that was a black person. It's it's so ridiculous um, that that's a that's a normal reaction to African Americans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's no it's no more a surprise. Yeah. Once you start once you start un uh, uncovering the actual uh, you know um, strategic method methodology all of this. Yes. Is on purpose that you cannot stay, you know, oppressing someone if they know they came from greatness. Mm -hmm. If they know a generation, just one generation ago, yeah, you had inventors, successful mm -hmm. people, all of the, you know, technology. One generation ago, mm -hmm. this generation, in fact, or you know, just and it goes on and on and on and on. Yes, on and on from the founding of this country, all of the innovation, all of the amazing. Uh, black people, people of Are color. The origination. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, yeah, like, it's stupid to say that that's how we react, but it's it's on purpose. Yeah. Because like I said, it's not your fault if you don't know what an old neck head is or how they look like black people with wide noses and big lips yeah. and so cornrows. Cor like, cor they, have, they have some right. that look like Asian, like Asian, yeah. Chinese, like <laughs> But yeah, it's, I want to change that. I want to change that reaction for everybody. It's, yeah, it's not hard. You just got to stay at it, and other people have to join in. Yeah, to say let's 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 stop that from being a reaction. I think, like oh. I, honestly, sometimes I hate to say it like this, but I think the older generations are are done in. I think we got to get these little ones. Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. That's yeah, what I'm talking about. Yeah, because the old like <laughs> I, I tell people now, you know, like. The information is there, like Marcus. Yeah. You, yes. like, you say it. You said it. You have a computer in yes. your pocket. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? So right. you can learn now. Now, there's a lot of misleading and untrue stuff mm -hmm. on you know on the internet. But if you learn how to research and how to mm -hmm. you know check sources and stuff like yes. that, then you can still you know get to the heart of a lot of it. And so, just, like I remember being in college and. Like I had this American government professor. I don't know why he taught us a little bit of American government. He taught you what you needed to pass the test, <laughs> but the rest of it, he was just spitting game. And like he would always say, "If you don't believe me when I tell you these outlandish facts, go look it up." Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. I was, you know, I was nineteen, twenty years old at Grambling. And as soon as I would get out of class, I would walk my butt straight to the library. <laughs> I already took notes. I was like, I'm about to catch this dude in a lie, you know? And I would like research all this stuff. I'm talking about that's when, you know, you was pulling microfish and yes. all this stuff. <laughs> And I'm like, this fool is like. I go to card I, catalog, be looking for. Yes, yes. Looking yes. Do we, what y'all know about the Dewey Decimal System? Too bad. You know what I mean? Um, and like, I, you know, and I just couldn't catch him in anything. And I was like, this don't even like all of this stuff that they're not teaching. And then I would try to tell other kids in the class and I realized everybody just ain't into it the same. Like where I like I remember, you know, my, the autobiography of Malcolm X significantly changing my life, changing helping me rewire the way that I think, helping me see things, you know, like take some veils off and see things more clearly. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would buy that book for people and be like, yo, read this. It's going to change your life. And they would like read a chapter or something and then be done. I'm going to tell you, man, by the time I got close to the end of the chapter two of that book, I was like, I'm canceling everything. I read that book on a weekend. I stayed home. I, you know, canceled and I just read it. I was like, this is like amazing. And there have been books that have done that for me, but then you let other people read it and they just, 
everybody is not sincere about you know really learning and that's cool mm -hmm. i guess but to your point marcus that you're that you're those are going to always be the people that are going to be like wow you know <laughs> so like i think nowadays we think we try to minimize you guys might have heard me say like that that the thing that was making me want to fight people is when people were talking about we are not our ancestors and they were wearing yeah. those shirts and all that yeah. stuff you know last year when the black lives matter really hit yeah and i was like man I, i'll fight you right now you're right we're nothing close to our ancestors we don't have that type of resolve we don't have that type of you know um resourcefulness Yes. You know what I'm saying? And the attitude to stick together, you know, like, yeah, mm -hmm. we're nothing like them, but it's willing, like, willing to risk your life to actually rescue another person's from, you know, their predicament. That's that's mm -hmm. that's superhero level stuff. That is what a superhero is. If you want to call Batman a superhero and you don't consider uh, that that magnificent woman who did the underground, un underground railroad not if you don't call her a superhero then i don't know what is because she could have been murdered multiple times mm -hmm. every single time every single time mm -hmm. no costume no 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 cape i don't think so but the point is <laughs> yeah that's real life superhero stuff like mm -hmm. i don't know anybody that's willing to well i could die tonight but and I'm doing this so they can be free. I'm doing right. this for their benefit. So we yeah. can all get, yeah. And there's so many. Um, yeah. I got to, with uh, my friend Ishmael, uh, from Dad is Not a Noun, uh, he asked me to come on and uh, co-host and interview a lady from the July Perry Foundation. If you guys are familiar with the Okoe, uh massacre in Florida. Yeah. Like, these people were murdered because they, cause they refused to be intimidated and they were gonna vote, you know? And, mm -hmm. and that's it. And these weren't, like these these dudes, July Perry was well off. He was making money, you know? Mm -hmm. He was he was well off and he still was like, nope, I'm, I'm voting and I'm encouraging my people to vote. And they died for that. Like literally people went to their houses and murdered them for that, you know, just so they could vote. And I'm not here to say, oh, that means you're supposed to vote or none of that stuff. But just to understand what our people were willing to do in order to advance the culture to where we can be where we are. And yeah. we sitting here being dumb. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah. And, and look, at the end of that movie, um, uh, 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 Black... Um, Judas and the Black Messiah on uh, HBO Max. Mm -hmm. um, man, you say you didn't or you didn't? No, I haven't yet. I still need to watch that one. Okay. You're familiar well, with the story though, right? With Fred Hampton? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah man. Listen, if that doesn't make you angry, yeah. um, then you have a special meeting with yourself to look in the mirror and say, well, you know, and it's not one that's not a one-off story it's just i think it made me angry because you know i didn't know the intimacy of it mm -hmm. i hadn't seen i guess the intimacy of it I've, I've watched videos of fred hampton speaking all that stuff but um before but the intimacy of it and the just fury it made me furious man so much so that and i don't want to spoil it but you know the the informant we know how it is. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's okay. Go ahead and say it. It's fine. <laughs> well, I mean, he, he said you know the story of it, but you know, um, that kind of stuff to where I, as soon as they mentioned the dude, I'm like, he better not be alive. Let me double check. Hold on. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I went to Google immediately, but I didn't have to because they, they resolved it. But that's the stuff where I'm like, um, and to speak on what Greg was saying, uh, it happened with the electromagnetism. If you, if you develop a mindset to say, yes, the world is at your fingertips, but just know every piece of information, take it with a grain of salt to say, let me further. That's a springboard. That's an introduction to new information, period. Yeah. Take it as, let me go dive deeper. On yeah. that. Because every, every video I saw about uh, electricity featured a European as the scientific 
person who studied this and found out how it works and they made a law out of it. And I'm like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Ancient, you know, African science and breakthroughs and this, that, and I found website after website after website. Egyptians had copper wire in the pyramids, you know, uh, and, and they, like they're, the, yeah, and light bulb, like and they have, they have hieroglyphics of this. If you haven't seen them, I remember being freaked out, like, what the hell? What is that? Is that, what is that? And I saw, yeah. when I saw that hieroglyph at first, I'm like, why did not, how am I just seeing this now? Mm -hmm. And it's because Europeans and other, you know, explorers, not African, have been pillaging and going into our history, our ancient yeah. uh, backstory. Yep. And even, even the fact that claiming, they made... claiming it like we found this, we're going to put it in our museum <laughs> over mm -hmm. here. Yeah. E even even it's the ours fact now. that they take, they take Egypt and make it seem like oh, that was the only place. But, you know, you can go <laughs> throughout Sudan and Nigeria yes. and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Central Africa, and <laughs> South Africa, like, Zimbabwe, like all these different places, yeah. and you find all this, you know, amazing, yeah, yeah, man. and 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 you know, like yes. buildings and mm -hmm. all this stuff, and it's like just the fact that they make it seem because Egypt <laughs> is the close, you know, that's the one that they can say, uh, you know, well, look at the, you know, these people's skin because it's been colonized over and over by multiple, <sighs> you know, so now they can, you can go back and say, well, look at them. And try to say they're not black, but then you can go look, go to Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know exactly. Like, it's crazy, man. And so it's good to talk about and try to get people to see. We're also in this age where I almost feel like people uh, are anti-information. Yeah. Like people, people will talk about how but they don't care about history. And that's so opposite of us because we were always taught, you know, at least in in the you know the circle that I was in, we were always taught you need to know as much history as you can. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. you sitting here thinking some a of this meme stuff was is everything new. that gave you all the information. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, they say like, you know, people will watch like a YouTube video mm. and think that that's you know that that's doctrine or something, but it's like. Yes. You know, there's so much more that goes in. If you don't understand, like, like I've learned that with history, you know, when you're talking about things like history, people are always going to tell it from their point of view or their perspective. Exactly. So it's like you need to even be able to filter through some of that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but and then, in, then it gets laughable, this. and then it becomes laughable. Um, because they, they do it so much here in America to the point, and not laughable, like you have to laugh at it because of how mm -hmm. ridiculous it is. When, when, when they frame history as if they made this, you know, as if they came up with all this innovation mm -hmm. uh, and it's laughable, you have to laugh. Like, oh, oh, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, <laughs> I know for a fact, <laughs> you know, but you have to take it, yeah, you, exactly, that laugh. Yeah, it reminds <laughs> me of the, uh, uh, the, the the head of um, North Korea. It's like I made, I designed that building. I did all this. I did all that. I made the streets. I invented internet. I invented Facebook. <laughs> and you got um, like that. I was recently uh, watching some stuff about. Um, it was supposed to be about Rapa Nui. Which we did, yes. you know, we we highlighted in issue four of Tuskegee Airs, and you know, I love it because you know it'll be like a white dude narrating, and they'll be like, and you know, they're you know, for years they thought that you know they they said things like you know these people were cannibals and blah blah yeah, blah, right, and right. you know, but this white dude kept it really really real, but he was like really, it was just the you know colonization that yeah. destroyed you know that tore it down. And like he was talking, it was one of the first people that I've heard because I've even heard, you know, the thing where they were saying, you know, which doesn't even sound believable, but they were saying, you know, these people came from Peru and stopped in this, you know, because Rapa Nui is like, I think it's with the most isolated, yeah. you know, civilization in the world. 
And, you know, he was like, yeah, that's not true. They came down from, uh, you know, you know, basically from other Pacific islands, you know what I'm saying? Which totally sounds realistic. Now we're talking, right? And, um, but it's just funny how so many of them, I went, uh, cause I'm a, you know, y'all know I'm a history maniac. Uh, <laughs> so I was watching, you know, they do these docudramas. They did one on like Julius C. I think it was just Rome as a whole. Like Netflix, you know, they did that one. They've done a couple of others. So they did a Japanese one, you know. And so, you know, as soon as it came on, and I hear like a white dude talking, and I'm like, <laughs> click. I, you know, I don't, I don't want to hear from your perspective, dog, because I already know what y'all are going to do. You know what I'm saying? It's like, allow people to tell their real stories yes. from their points of view. And, you know, so real information can get out instead of, you know, this watered down stuff that y'all be spitting. Exactly. Yeah, like you said, we just got to go deeper and tell our own stories. And that's part of like the, you know, with us having this podcast, like, you know, Mona wanted, I mean, she knows that we were talking about this uh couple years ago was like, all right, we're not hearing, seeing enough of, you know, the indigenous voices, enough of the, you know, African disparian voices. We're not hearing enough of the EOC voices. And it's like, uh, and we were talking back and forth and then all of a sudden, you know, the p- pandemic hit and she's like, all right, I'm going to make this podcast happen. And then <laughs> <laughs> she kicked it off and then next the next thing I know is me and her were chatting again, and then I made a guest appearance and went from, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, let, let's let's make this thing go to the next level. Yeah. And it's it's one of those that we have to make those avenues, those um, options out there to get that information, those voices out there for people to see creatives like yourselves and learn these things that you probably wouldn't learn from your little town, because a lot of people depend on what their parents tell them that mm. they learn from their neighbors. And if they never get out of their town that they grew up in, they so never true. learn beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make you a shirt, Danny, that say I'm body body. Um, <laughs> because it fits you. It just fits everything. I don't think, I don't think you can tell Dana uh, an idea, man. Dana's like, yo, what's stopping yeah, yeah. you to do it right now? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the no, whole? Danny, well, Danny doesn't mess around, man. Like, yeah, man. I was like, man, I I'm think I want to like, uh, I think I want to do a screening for uh, Into yeah. the Spider Verse, but I don't want to rent out a whole theater five minutes later. Okay, these are your options. <laughs> you, you know, I've already talked to these people. She said she'll tell you the tickets like that. What, right, Danny? Yeah. Uh, so we put in every idea. Group. We put it in the group, and then like we had like two people that was like, "I'm down," so I went ahead and bought a yeah. ticket. Then another ten, then another ten. We ended up getting like half of the theater. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, "What just happened?" Data does not play, man. Like, does not play around. Cool. She's like, "What's the hold up? What's the hold up? <laughs> Do it right now." Yeah, you call right it now. Well, well, Dana, I was just thinking about it. No, we yeah, can, but- let me. Let me, let me, let me, let me that's why Dana and I get along because we be the same yeah. way. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, it. Oh yeah, let's go do that. Mm-hmm, sounds good. I've, I've like, are you serious told. about it? You really want to make? Because Greg, no, I'll be like, yeah. do you really want to do a a, a a a screening, right? And he's like, yeah, I really. All right, bet. Yeah. No, it's yeah. Not. I can't I tell. Really you can't tell Dana and I like that. I was like, dude, we're not gonna when we when Dana hooked us up with the AMC people. I was like. I'm not talking to Dana until I'm sure <laughs> to do it because Dana's gonna, you know, once you put it in there, like she's yeah. going. And so I, I was oh, like, we need to have all our ducks in a row. He's like, I'm just saying, yeah. mention it to her. I was like, no, I'm just saying. Nah, that's not how it works. You guys make sure you want to do it because once I talk to Dana, it's done. <laughs> there won't be no, no three of- days, three wait, you know, waiting three weeks for something to turn <laughs> no. around. Nah. That's not how I operate. Let's get this done. Yeah. Get it done. I'm going to call you body body from now on. What's up, body body? 
Body Body <laughs> was a terrible rap song for all the children <laughs> that may be listening. Um, What's Body Body? Yeah. You guys reading any good good comics lately? I know we've been on here. You can tell us to shut up. I, say, yeah. <laughs> I'm not I just I'm love there. that we everybody we still have people hanging in and everything. That just shows how much they are enjoying the conversation and <laughs> stuff. Even much, for Katie, Katie is over in Europe. In yeah. And Katie, our, one of our viewers, is in Europe. She's mm -hmm. hanged in till now, and she's like, it's 4 a.m. there, so she has to go. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> yeah, Katie's like, awesome. I'm reading this. Um, I was up in uh, Maryland a few weeks ago, and I went. I finally got to go to Third Eye Comics. And, um, but why you ain't say hello, though? Yeah. <laughs> See, what had happened was... <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what it was, was... <laughs> But um, I got this uh, book called uh, Truth Department. I'm uh -huh. mentioning it because it's like if you're into history and all that kind of stuff and conspiracy type stuff, yeah. it's really cool. I just got the seventh issue just dropped today, but I haven't read it yet. You said um, Truth Department? Yeah. Okay. But it was, man, I read, I sat down, I got the graphic novel first and they had like yeah, the first five issues okay it's pretty dope man it's weird but you know i'm checking out weird ain't never thank hurt you. anybody thank you thank you anybody else reading anything good i'm just trying to catch up on my pile man i just <laughs> <laughs> right now you know with the kickstarter and just getting you know the podcast on all the different platforms it's just taking up all the time but once the Kickstarter's over, I'm going uh, I'm to pull out my pile and work down. The last uh, thing I read was Stephanie Williams' uh, Living oh, Heroes. Yeah. Hmm. If wow. you didn't pick that up, uh, she did a Kickstarter. She basically did like Living Single, but mm -hmm. instead yeah. of everybody, it's uh, superhero, uh, superheroes. So you have Storm in there. You got all these characters in it. And yeah, I love it. She does have it still for sale through uh, one of her, her link and everything, but yeah, it's I I love how she just told that concept that different people like She Hulk was you know was like this person in living living single, and it, she just found the perfect different characters to place uh, the characters in living single, and it's just this whole element like okay yeah th that's definitely Max right there. <laughs> You know, the superhero version of Max and all that. So, yeah, that was the last one I just read after I got that from her. Dope. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, uh, Moana, um, with, the, with the pile. I, I went on this uh, comic buying spree. because mm -hmm. I, And I, I haven't touched. I bought... The only one I read was the X-Men um, House of X, Powers of X. I read all those. Mm -hmm. But I bought so much more. Me too. And haven't opened <laughs> up any of that stuff. I bought the whole uh, Batman White Knight series. Mm -hmm. Now listen, this is what I have to I have to admit this, and don't judge me. So there's these people <laughs> on YouTube that will read the comics mm -hmm. for you. They'll turn the pages. They take. I think they take the, the words yes. out of the balloons. Listen, I think comic historian is one. It's, I can listen and then look and work and like, oh, snap, Batman, Court of Owls. I read all of that by watching the dude read it for me. It was, but he did voiceover. He was doing like little voice changes and pitch changes. Look, I just, I, I don't read. If you I don't need even read the Moana Nui podcast to do that for you, just look, yes. we, we can make a special tier on the Kickstarter. Y'all can pay us and we will read these comics and y'all can listen to Are y'all going to do are y'all gonna do pitch changes? Yeah, change absolutely. Pitch? Okay, cool, cool. Y'all don't so even know about Moana knows about it because you know she interviewed me. I am currently recording for a um, do vo doing voiceovers for a nice. webtoon turning nice. into animation, and it's yeah. Nice. So I'm, I'm doing two different characters. Uh, I'm okay with y'all doing that. Listen, I don't even read <laughs> Thor. I don't even read Thor. I've never read a Thor book. I just watched 
what was this new one? Uh, God Killer? I don't know when that came out. Yeah. Um, but they did a lot of work. They had sound effects. They had people uh, laughing. They had mm -hmm. the, the panel was shaking. They did a lot of work on this thing. <laughs> and I was I was enthralled. I was like, this is cool, man. But it was actually a pretty good story. So um I yeah, uh uh don't judge me. But yeah. um uh, yeah, that's how I get it had, in sometimes. Uh, Cree Summer and a lot of the voice actors, they do it. I don't know if it's on YouTube, but I know it's on IG. <laughs> they do that. They have days that they just sit there. Uh, they do reading books to kids, and then they have other days that they read comics and other things, and they just read it wow. in different voices. So you got like Cree Summer doing, you know, reading, you know, this particular volume and <sighs> just doing yes. different voices and stuff. And then um, oh gosh, what's his name? I can't remember. I was about to say, is this a channel on YouTube or she has I don't, her own YouTube channel? I don't know if it's on <laughs> YouTube. I do know they have a special uh, IG um, page that is all these voice actors come on different times and they're re uh, reading and everything. I have to I have to look and see if they have it as a voice actor. Uh, as far like as uh, the ha the voice actors doing it on um, on YouTube. Hey man, I'm trying to sell comics. I don't want people reading my comics. Online. Hey, so, a lot of people pay. They pay for that because they have the little audio books that you pay for your audio yeah. book and you listen to it. You drive it. So do the same thing for comics. On YouTube? No, she's talking no, about like Audible.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they yeah, and they I pay would. for it. Listen, man, oh, my yeah, eyes are burnt yeah. out, man. Don't judge people for doing this. It's it's a service that yeah, I appreciate. Stop being lazy. Read the I can't help it, I, I'm technically reading it by listening to it, okay? So uh, <laughs> it helps, man. I look at a computer screen all day, okay? Yeah. And by the time I get, you know, comfortable yeah. and sitting down, my eyes are like, what do you think you're doing? I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm going to read this comic real quick. Yeah. Oh, nah. Bro, Your that, eyes bro. can't even talk, man. You just make yeah, it they can, the man. No, they talk <laughs> very clearly, and they say, nah, none of that. We going to bed. Well, I would like to read this comic first, sir. No. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn. All right, cool. Thank and you, I, Matt. I fall asleep. See, Matt has the idea. You just tease it. <laughs> I'm trying to sell books, man. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I want to read comics. Well, maybe, man. Greg, you could do that for Tuskegee. It's like people can buy the audiobook and you do the, um, you're like the narrator, and then you get a, you hire, you get a bunch of us like do the different voiceovers, and then we get some. No, but now that and then I we know sell the audiobooks. Now that I know you're doing some voiceovers, I might have to talk to you about another exactly. project that I'm Thank working you. on, Dana. Um, <laughs> I was about to say uh, he's not the greatest actor. Yeah. Yet. I mean, he can be. That's why I say he just does the narration. He just does the narration. He just read, and now they go into, and then he just does that. I don't want it. I'm sorry, I don't. Um, but yeah, Dana, I'm gonna be hitting you up because I might need you to do some voiceover stuff. All right, let me know. Um. Also, I should have the books uh, for this newest. An episode issue of Sonica. Ooh. Um, and I got, I don't know, I got Havana. You know Havana? Yes. When, yes. Um, Havana. She did, was on I here did. previously. She's the greatest. Yes, she is. Um, she did oh, one goodness. of my, she did the art for one of my short stories. Yes, oh, she told us then, about it. Oh, cool. And then Michael Lancet, who's really dope, he's based out of Atlanta as well. Um, he did the other one. So it's going to be like a book and a half, like two separate books that I'll be releasing. I should have them back in the next couple of days. And then you're going to have them for sale? Come on now. <laughs> you said, come Didn't on, you on my copy. Didn't you? You pledged to the Kickstarter, right? Yep. Yeah, but don't mean I just want one copy. You should know better yeah, by now. Yeah, you know, because right. you know my goddaughter's going to want one. Your goddaughter, your niece. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's when you got to play the song, Danny. If 
you don't know me. <laughs> like, you got to literally play it for him. So, you understand? That's, but you the guitar, know you know, I could only pledge it at one level one time. It's like, I needed the option to do add ons. Like, do you want more than one copy of this comic? And then I could have been like, add on four more. <laughs> So the next Kickstarter you do, you should have the option to add on additional comments. Yeah. They, uh -huh, so uh -huh. when I was um, when I was doing this Kickstarter, they were piloting their yeah. add-on thing. I think is it full go now? Or? Yeah, it's it's um, it's available. the la The last one I did, um, they had it. It's still like the way they generate the spreadsheet at the end. Mm -hmm. You still gotta kind of go through because it doesn't lump it all to one backer. So um, yeah, it's a little tricky in the spreadsheet, but yes, they do capture all the add-ons and everything, um, and you can add as many. Hey, as you want. Uh, I, I'm gonna go get my uh, power swords because this thing about to die. I know we've been on here for <laughs> no, my kids. Years. My kids are quiet upstairs. They know good and well. It's time to go to bed. They are quiet. In this house. <laughs> We were starting to watch that um, King Kong versus uh, Godzilla. Oh, oh man. man! Oh yeah! Uh, you shut you shut your face over there, Greg. Um, I have my <laughs> theories of what's going to happen, and I told my kids, "Listen, kids, your father's expectation of this movie is very low <laughs> in terms of it being good." However, what I would hope to see, and you know, we talked about it. They haven't seen all the Godzilla movies. I decided to fill them in, tell them how bad they were. But <clears throat> at this point. I'm looking forward to at least seeing something get, you know, beat up. You know, you know. I think I have my thoughts of what's gonna happen, but yeah, we'll, we gotta go watch that. So I guess they get a time extension because I told them it was only gonna be an hour. Yeah, it's been a little bit over an hour. Yeah, uh, just a little bit. <laughs> a little bit over an hour, you know. But I'm having fun, man. I didn't say it was gonna have all fun and stuff. Used to answering the same questions over and over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. Greg what do you think about that. diversity? Yeah, what do you think about diversity in comics? <laughs> <sighs> well, <laughs> you know, it's good. Especially there was a, a <laughs> second where, I, like, there were so many podcasts and interviews. That's why I love uh, the first time I came on with Moana because. We nerded out on history. It was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't care if anybody's watching. This is a good conversation. Yes, and <laughs> it really was. Sometimes you need those. Like, so mm -hmm. it's just as Damn. fun as, yeah. Uh, awesome. Well, that piece is looking amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We're almost there. I think I'm. Um... Oh, I turned all the shines off. Let me turn all the special effects. Wow. What are those? 50, Whoa. 50 caliber bullets? What, what are those? Well, that goes, that goes back to the putty idea, man. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to explain it in the, yeah. in the, in the post. Yeah. But yeah, he's going to be able to uh, shape shift that putty. So he's basically a murderer. He's not murdering people. <laughs> this is when he needs to take he, down a vehicle. He said self okay? defense. Self defense. I, I, look, I've already thought this through. It's fine. <laughs> it's gotta be fine. I gotta yes, use it to kill Matt people. Matt Williams said the same thing. He concurs. You need more add-on options. Yes. Yeah. Um. Because right now I'm dealing. So I told people with this Kickstarter, I was like, just uh, you know, if you want something extra, and I gave them the prices. Mm -hmm. But now, it's like I gotta remember exactly. exactly. Yeah, it's hard to track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I would like for that. I think pri previously they were trying to force you to use those backer kits and those kind of things, um, but I like that they're making it to where they can do it themselves. Mm -hmm. The flip side of it is just go to the website. All that stuff's gonna be up because I got. Uh, these thingamajiggies coming. Oh, yes. Mm, wait, she's backwards. Oh, wait, let me show. Let, Ooh, me, let me put you up. Yes, uh, they look so nice. Yes, blow it up so we can see it better. Yeah. There she is. Ooh, get that collectible limited edition. Limited edition. <laughs> and I get just it. got something to where I can uh, get the color because, with you know, on the website, They'll be expensive uh, if you didn't do part of the uh, 
you know, if you didn't do it as part of the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. So um, I do, I am going to have an option soon where it'll just be the resin. Like they'll just be that gray color. Okay. But some people like those, and then some people like to paint them themselves. So, right. Um, so to get a less expensive option, um, but yeah, I'll have those up. I got my masks, but they're downstairs. And I don't feel like going downstairs. <laughs> um, but yeah, people that order, you know, the pledges, the packages where they get the mask, got those for you. So it's gonna be pretty fun. Awesome. Yeah, so yeah, for the next one, when you get ready to do your next volume, whether it's the Skiggy Airs or whichever one you're going to do the next volume, yeah, make sure you have some more at the add on so I can add on more than one comic because that way I can order my five that I need to order. Okay. I'm that way I'm not, I'm not I'm talking you, to you on Facebook. <laughs> The Dana package. Yeah, I was about to say, for you, Dana. Because yeah. I'll be I'm stalking y'all on Facebook, but like, hey, Greg, I know I got to meet you. So I need to go ahead, go ahead and 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 go ahead and grab four more comics. And then let me go ahead yeah. and PayPal you that money. Yeah. <laughs> See, Dana does not play. Tough, man. Today you're gonna have to do a uh, panel on how to support people. <laughs> we was just talking so about that. Mm -hmm. Show how to do this. This is we how need I to get the other day. Get the, they can, it could be the Dana and Dana. Yes, podcast. we got as Nakia calls it's like Dana and Dana 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> the first time we met Dana Holmes, I think. I don't know if it was yeah. the first time. I think it was the most memorable time. We were in DC at BlurCon. Yeah. We're sitting Blurcon. outside. And we see this dude walking up with that Wonder Woman shirt on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was like, oh, we got out of the Wonder Woman. I think, I don't even know how long that shirt had been up for sale. But it was great. Yeah. And he's, you know, some of y'all, man, I just be like, I love y'all. <laughs> yeah. I love y'all. Like, hey, man, it's a nice shirt. I like that shirt. I drew that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, you're like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I hadn't met him yet. That was the first time I met. I met oh, him. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the first uh, time yeah, yeah. you met in person. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And you know how you you might see people on Facebook or whatever, but when you you, you got to meet them in person to really yeah. you know, have people be walking up to the table like, what's up, man? I'd be like, hey. They'd be like, hey. <laughs> I'm like, how like, you who are you? It's me, Joseph, from, remember that post oh. you made that one time? And I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Me, guys. I usually able, yeah. like, I can at least remember the name on Facebook. And then you have the people, like, on Instagram who have names like, you know, Bubblegum Man or something. It's like, <laughs> how am I supposed to remember you, dog? I want yeah. to, but I can't remember you because I don't even know your name. I come in all the time, Marcus, on your post. What? Yeah, I messaged you yesterday. Oh, Teddy Boy 63? Oh, man. You don't have your face on your profile picture. I wouldn't have recognized you, bro. It's really good to see you, man. Good. And, you know, it is, it is good to actually put the face, too. But, yeah, yeah. The full expectation. And, of course, Greg gets me every time. But the real hard wrenching disappointment when you know you don't remember me what's my name like don't just don't do that yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Hard, after man. i got that man how many what's the most we did seven seven we was did, it seven that we did back to back we shows did, we did eight shows in 10 weeks one time yeah lord back to back back to back yeah um, uh, and at that yeah. point, you gotta understand that's one weekend, one weekend, one oh, weekend. Exactly. New York, uh, what was it Baltimore? Yeah, it was like new, it was it was crazy. It was <clears throat> um, we did a small one. We did New York, Baltimore. Yeah, we did that one in Philly, uh, AWA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what else? What else? What else? Oh, I hope because we do small ones too. Yeah. But at that point, you got to realize we've, we've now talked to over, you know, 3,000 humans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, about everything. And sometimes 
we go to dinner and talk to those same, you know, about everything. Sometimes the conversations run into each other. Like, who was I talking to? Greg, who? Right. Oh. <laughs> Nigga, that was four weeks ago. Oh, oh. Okay, yeah, you're right, you're right. And it's, it's really, it's kind of messed up, but that's, yeah. And so then people are like, you know, y'all remember me? Huh? Um, yeah. Huh? When? Wait, where were we? Where were we exactly? <laughs> okay. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I remember you, dog. Not, I, I have the hardest time of real. everybody be like, hey, I, I know you took my picture at Sister Con. I'm like, <laughs> what were you? Okay, what were you? I was Deadpool. You know how many Deadpools I saw? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's messed up. I, it's not It's not what people make it out to be. Like, you know, we're not trying to forget you or nothing. Mm-hmm. It's hard. And I genuinely talk to people that come by the table, it's genuine. I'm happy yeah. to meet you. Happy to see you. Thank you for your support. Um, but then 700 other people come by and all want to have that kind of, it's, it's just, it's impossible for sometimes. But um, love y'all. Love y'all. <laughs> love y'all. Yeah, don't have that um, photographic memory. <laughs> Man, Greg, Greg tries to judge me about I, it though. I used, I used to. No, I judge you about stuff like if we're talking to somebody and then they walk away and then they come back in five minutes and you're like, "Hey, nice to meet you." Uh, I judge that's you. That's not. That. That's not that bad. It's not that. It's if that is this bad. is a show. It's no. I'm saying it's, that's not what happens. It'll be like it two does. or three shows, or a year goes by and they got a wig on. In context, and look nothing like the her what they did last year. And Greg's like, man, you know her. I'm like, hey, man. If somebody comes and buy, it looks like a person with a red eyes and a mask and a costume. No, this is not what my brain cataloged. I'm sorry. Yes, yes I remember. If somebody comes Thank and spends four hundred dollars, it's not even that all the time. Buying your stuff, you need to remember that. <laughs> that's not. That's not all the time. What happens, man? <laughs> yes, it's Greg like likes to make fun of me. I do make fun of you. Uh, it was, like, yeah. we could be talking to somebody for 20 minutes and then they walk away, like, let me go get a drink. And then they come back. Like, hey, it's not true. I'm Marcus Williams. It's not true. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not true. It's not true. It's not what happens, man. It's true. Uh, that, well, I have, a ne- I, have a knee jerk, I have a knee jerk introduction sometimes <laughs> where I'm drawing or I'm doing stuff and then I'll look down and I'll look up. After, hey, how's it going? Good to meet you. Oh, hey, there you are. I remember you. Um, that's different. That's different. That's not, not the same thing. Oh, yes. But yeah, man, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. But we love them. You didn't think, you know, you wouldn't think that you would miss the airport. And I don't really miss TSA, but yeah. I do miss yeah. people, man. Man, did, that, did I tell you they're making people board backwards now? It's so mean? much easier. Like they board from the back. Oh, the back, back of the plane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I stood up and I gave him, you know, that uh, <laughs> uh, with the good rock where he's like, yeah, man. I did that. It's so, not hard. What about what about when you're leaving? What do you mean? They're leaving the plane is the same though, right? Did yeah. they Did they get any slides? No, they haven't created. Marcus wants them to create like a slide where you go Off down the a little corridor. Open the side. Open the side. <laughs> oh, because so yeah. oh, they have the emergency slides. Exactly. Like, if there's a exactly. thing. So you want them to deploy that when when you get off? Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> just just have a roll up slide. Just like oh, know, just roll, roll up. up. Uh, don't deploy yeah. those. Just the you know then no, you just slide down. That'll okay. Take too long. Yeah. <laughs> just that'll take too long. long to, no, that'll take too long to deflate. Just yeah, roll up slide. It's optional. Just yeah. give me the option. I'm okay to slide. Watch out. Yeah. yeah. If, if you don't, if you don't have a bunch of carry-ons, go ahead and take the slide down, and you yeah, can go okay ahead and go to your you dislocate a hip. Mm-hmm. It'll be, a, it'll be, a, it'll be a nice fluffy. You get, you're gonna be bottom, stiff man. trying to get off the plane, <laughs> and then slide, and that that joint gun. Yeah, you're gonna be obviously, trying to look. Obviously, you'll have to have some sort of uh, signing. You know, waiver. You can't sue them. <laughs> you can't sue them. But it's optional. It's optional. It's not mandatory. I want to be able to sue. What if, like, somebody tries to slide behind me too fast 
He takes me out. Obviously, <laughs> look, obviously, whoever agreed to sit by the door, it's going to be the slide manager. Okay, sir? <laughs> Give him two minutes to slide. Thank you. All right, go ahead. You know those slide people, manager. Those people that jump up as soon as the plane touches down. Yes. Like those yes. people, they're going to be trying to yes. jump in front of people. It could get ugly, man. Yeah. I don't right, think man. we need to continue to, you know, process and come up, you know, figure out how to get this slide idea together. Yeah. If, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if, you, give, if you give people like a vest, it's a wrap. You, if you're a slide manager and you get a vest, you, you know, it's a done deal. So you get to wear a vest. You already get to sit by the door, emergency exit, and they ask you if you're ready for that responsibility, but they don't give you nothing. You don't feel special. If they gave you a vest, right? Hmm. Boom. You'll feel special the whole time. Maybe get a little discount. I don't know. We'll work it in. I got some ideas. Got some yeah, ideas. Keith, I, I, listen, man, I'm not just going to automatically <laughs> like reject your proposal, man, but I do think you need to you know, think it all the way through. All right. Well, you know, I'll, I'll look into the laws, but what kind of laws are necessary for Yeah, talk, talk to that. FAA, you know, get that clear with yeah. FAA first, yeah. and then, you know, do a pilot, you know, with like, Atlanta Airport. <laughs> If, yes. if people put on like a pair of cushion boots, so mm. if you accidentally mm. kick the person that's you know below you, <laughs> we already talked about that. It's gonna be a mandatory wait. Like, hey, 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 you gotta wait. The you said, and I might as well just walk. Or, or get like those little those little special slipper shoes they give you, like in first class. <laughs> Everybody gets those that go down the slide, and then your shoes will be waiting for you at the bottom. <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good. And if it's Ooh, raining, we'll just, just have to do a little little umbrella. It's fine. Um, <laughs> Greg, you, just, you, can't, you can't be a maniac with it, man. You got to have patience. Okay. This I'm going to be like, I want to slide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not responsible enough. Right. That's what the slide manager's job is for. Sir, back up. Sir, security. <laughs> security. Secure top. Secure top. Let's, let's go. That's what seems to be the problem. So, so y'all didn't back watch, off and wait. Y'all didn't watch Godzilla in King Kong? Not yet. I was going to save it for this weekend. Um, I did. Oh, I fell asleep kids a couple asleep. of times. It wasn't because the movie was boring or anything. I just was, it was raining. It was real comfortable over here. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go back. But the parts I saw, I was like, word. Um, yeah, I'm going to definitely, I'll probably eat. Turn it on when we're done here. <sighs> okay, so you know I'm not a spoiler type, so I'm gonna call you after this. And be like, so I'm not gonna talk to you. I've talked to you Shut for up, three hours, and that, <laughs> no, no, on top that's of the other hour I talked to you today. <laughs> I am done. Marcus got his allotment <laughs> for the other day. No, and Marcus gets Marcus gets way more time than. Well, it's not like, oh, I was about to say, don't admit that, man. Don't. But no, I mean, yeah, don't you know, get me in trouble. We're going through logistics and stuff, you know, like working through, mm -hmm. talking through processes almost daily. So Marcus gets plenty of time. But my Babe, point is, Marcus, Marcus basically should be glad that daytime minute. You, he don't, you don't pay for daytime minutes. <laughs> Some people don't get no time. I'm like, I don't have to. I don't. There's no reason I need to hear your voice, man. It's, Put it in the text. Put it in the text. I feel saying, you on that. Like, text me if, yeah. it, you know, put, put just clip note version in text. There what you go. do you want? What, what do you need that to where I actually have to hear your voice? Yeah. That is, and it's not a you thing. It's a me thing. Yeah. And I know that. I'm, and I'm seven out of ten, they it really yeah. could have just been a text message or like they exactly. said, a meeting that should have been an email. Right. <laughs> If it's my daughter or my nieces, somebody like, like they they get full whenever they call, you know it's all good. But you, especially if it's business, like I haven't talked to you in two years, man. Just send me a text. Yeah. Now, if you're talking about, hey, we want to talk about you, we want to set up this kind of contract with you and Marcus, with you know. Netflix and Nickelodeon and you know then yeah. let's call me. 
Dennis. 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 Denn
you know, depending on means and everything, they don't do the no research. It's like, did you even no. search? No, well, so or, or my favorite is when they tell you, well, give me the facts. <laughs> well, Google it and you give me four references right. that support where you came from. And it's got to yeah. be reliable references, not, you yeah. know, I believe in know? this dot com. Do, do you even know how to obtain a reliable reference? Do you know how to? You know what I'm saying? Well, like, you learned that when you had to write your papers in school. Right, right. <laughs> were you paying? Were they paying attention? Like, because I people be coming with like, like craziness, and I'd be mm -hmm. like, like it could be anything. You know, I love sports. Dude, be like saying stuff. I'm like, man, that guy don't even play for that team. Where'd you get that reference from? <laughs> like, uh, it's, you know, stickybasketball.com. That's probably not a good one, John. Like, sometimes it's common sense. Sometimes it's not. People, remember when people used to get got by the onion all the time? Mm -hmm. Oh, like, yes. And I'd be like, oh. Because sometimes you could just use common sense. <laughs> <laughs> you can use for the bad sense. part, for the last four years, you can't tell if the news lines was from the Ooh. onion or not. <laughs> oh no, for real. Right. Yeah. I That's true. That. It's true. With it's that very true. Scallywag we had in office. <laughs> A lot of times you were like, is this the onion? No, that's NBC <laughs> News. Oh. Oh right. <laughs> the president has pending red charges, right? <laughs> That goes. It's crazy. I think we got this. Done. All right. Hey, can you look at it? Amazing. Can you put my signature on it so people think that I drew it? Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 You want? You want yeah. like a new? I don't think. Yeah, I have and then we'll have Moana to send something. you her electronic signature so it could be on there too. And yes. 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 I, no, I, I see you on Moana I, movie I, podcast. I, oh, we. You, you should did. send them the logo so they could put. I'll sit on there. As seen on the Moana Nui podcast. That's we'll right. put, we'll put Marcus, Marcus drew the skinny bottom Africa. And we did a <laughs> <laughs> skinny bottom Africa. Oh, man. Uh, oh, this is real. Awesome, though. Yes. That looks so good. I want that as a poster. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I, I, I've been I watching this, this this full draw for twenty something years, and I'm still like always like it gets me hype. Yeah, when I watch him do it. it's like it doesn't even matter, man. Especially when he drew the both of y'all in as tr in the Tron look uh, yeah, when he drew that yeah. post. That I was that like, wasn't uh, supposed to, that wasn't supposed to go that long. It was supposed to just be a sketch. <laughs> And four but hours you, later, yeah, it's like, oh, it was, okay, then. awesome news. I'm like, I gotta get that poster, which I still gotta get that poster. <laughs> <laughs> that one is on the website. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I know. As soon as as soon as you said you posted on the website, I was like, bet I need to go ahead and just order my my bundle of stuff. But then I have to stock. Like I told Greg, the last time I picked up stuff from him, I'm like, I need Marcus. <laughs> I had Greg. Lily yeah, with the Sharpie had... signing all my stuff, and I said, "Now I need to get Marcus to sign it." <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know. I'm out we here in the parking know, lot, and she got like eighteen things for me to sign, and I'm like, "I wonder if people are wondering what the hell is going on over there." <laughs> it's all this exchanges. Like I'm slowly putting lot. stuff in my car. They probably think we got a whole deal going on. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's you one of those. It's one of those printing rings. Either they cheating Secret. or they're <laughs> somebody <laughs> buying drugs. Exactly. And we got our mask on and everything. And yeah. it's like, okay, here you go. All right, I'm going to slide this one to you now. I'm sliding this one to you. <laughs> okay, now I need you to slide these comics. <laughs> now I'm like, all right, so these I need to set aside for day. Marcus to sign when I see him next. Yes, indeed. So yeah, so be ready. I'm gonna be placing an order soon. I need some more stuff. I need to fill up my volume three of my little art portfolio. I haven't bought. I haven't bought. Ah, oh, so it's so weird. It's so weird. I would have had to re up on posters like several so times. Much. I haven't done. 
haven't done any of those things, you know, it's weird. I haven't had to go, uh, I haven't run out of something and be like, oh man, I just go, go to, uh, like I haven't randomly run out during a convention and had to go to Office Depot. Yeah. <laughs> And pay, look, pay way too much. Mm -hmm. None of these things. And we then, you have, Harlem, then you got I the printer. To to that, uh, I think we took turns going to that, that FedEx in Harlem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Greg, you're going to have to hit stuff. me up with your the place you're talking about for posters because we got to get some stuff printed um, for the pot, uh, for the Kickstarter. So you're going to yeah, hit me up with the, the places that you're talking about. Uh, I, would, we, I would say go to Neil. Um, premier copy there he's in Duluth um, he'll get it done for you print, you got good prices yes huh? you said yes he does he's got good prices and you said it's, uh, premier premier printing? premier copy I think is what it's called let me look him up on Instagram oh no yeah, they have a page on Instagram. But yes, you can look them up as well. Okay, Premier Copy Inc. Um, Atlanta Book yeah. Printing. That's them. Okay. No. Tell them what's in. Tell them what's in. All right. They know us. I see their website. Yeah. We've been dealing with them people for a while. Okay, on Meadowbrook <laughs> Parkway. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Is that what it over, is? Over. It's sort over of off of, uh, yeah, it's in between. Like if you're on um, satellite mm -hmm. going towards Discover, let's not Discover Mills anymore. Is it Discover? No, it's Sugarloaf Mills now. Yes, Sugarloaf Mills. Mm -hmm. Like you're going, yeah, it's over by that direction. Yes, yes, y'all. And you don't stop to the beach, y'all. I don't think I need to say this is static, but I'm going to say it's static. Let me put some static on it. For people that don't know. Yeah, the website shows is premierprintingnow.com now. Okay. That sounds right. That, that's them. Okay. Wanted to make the website. Sure. They, they, got, uh, they could have changed names. Well, because the website, initially when you press it, it, it was for premiercopy.com, but then it changed to premierprintingnow.com as it was going to the page. So I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. They changed their... They're rerouting their website, old website branding. name. <laughs> right, branding probably. I um, mean, yeah, you know, so yeah. they gotta make, make cooler choices. Okay. <clears throat> so, yes. Nice. We got it. I think we got awesome. it. Looks amazing. All right, lady. Let me thank you guys. Let me so go ahead much. and send Marcus our logo. <laughs> <laughs> it's previously stated that uh, this was a work in progress that I had ready. Um, <laughs> I was uh, trying to finish this and I just couldn't find time. So this was, uh, it was a great opportunity for me to just have an excuse. Yes, and it looks this, freaking uh, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Was, Can't uh, wait to see. Now, y'all just be ready. Um, we're going to have Marcus doing awesome. drawing Listen, something for, for the, us. The, so just be ready. The record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. What did I do? You said 30 minutes. What happened? No, I said three hours and 20, 20 minutes. We definitely have the record <laughs> for the longest podcast. And, uh, oh, but yeah. yeah that just seeing happen. that we had 11 people on. <laughs> Still, after all this time, and that's just on Facebook. I don't know how many people is on YouTube and Twitch, but y'all yeah. are some ride or dies, and I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all <laughs> hanging in there. You know, I wasn't even trying to work fast. I'm sorry. I was having a good time. You know, time it was like a mini re uh, con reunion. You had exactly. seen us so long. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is great. I hope everybody enjoyed watching it because I did. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, yeah, no, this is great excuses. Um, my kids are still awake. They're probably playing video games. I'm going to let them stay up. We're going <laughs> to finish the movie. You know, it'll be fine. Hey, they said there's um, it's two more days before spring break. They said two more days yes, before spring break. <laughs> yes. They, yep. They, they dropped that on me. I'm like, oh, snap, you're right. Yep. <laughs> that is this true. Friday is the start. After this Friday is the start of spring break. They out for a week. Right. That's true. We're going to go walking. Um, I've been walking with my kids periodically 
about uh, the pandemic, uh, Stone Mountain. We walked around Stone Mountain for the first time. Um, usually we walk up the mountain, but we got to walk around for the first time. It was cool, man. It was very cool. Um, really, really great walk. When Greg, what is like up with hour. the faces you've been making as you he was talking about walking around the mountain? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we've been out here a long time, y'all. Oh, no. Yeah, nothing to do with what Marcus was saying. Yes. Greg, well, like somebody just took him out. Right. Yeah. So yeah. This, I, usually, how this works is I'll send, I'll put a, uh, I'll post this and I will tag y'all for, um, you know, giving me a, Good uh, block of time to do some game stuff and, and just just have a great time talking about everything. Yes, everything. Yeah, definitely, we appreciate. Hey, man, can you do me a favor and iron that? Um, <laughs> that That's your second time talking about that because you We've said already it. talked about this. It's, not it's, not my, it's not my second time, Dana. No, that's Every the second time, time I heard you talk it. about it on on, on, on yeah. live. <laughs> Can we just Same, iron it man. real quick, man? You got kids, man. Kids, man. Or, or get uh, one of those steamers and just go shh, work up the... Thank you. See, he's he's not giving me solutions. I can't iron this, <laughs> this you plastic, can. This you plastic thing. And hey, then, then it's, why yeah, is there get, a burn get a hole steamer. in your thing? Borrow somebody's just, steamer and just... Right. Just steam it. Yes. Do something. Oh, no, I'm, hanging I'm it up. old enough to show you this one. Yes. I'll show you my helmet that I'm going to wear. All right. Be able to hear y'all. Yes, and, and be Marcus, let us know if we have to send you reference pictures and stuff for you, when you do our, our drawing. Because we're going to, we already got an idea how we're going to incorporate your drawing with the podcast. Okay, not, yes. not the drawing you did tonight, but the drawing we no, did the two of us. Yeah. Yes. I started laughing initially, but yes, I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we're gonna have static as part of the podcast. <laughs> All right, he pulling out the helmet. Okay. So of course, you know this was this was a an actual, you know, real snow snowboarding helmet. But I was watching The Mandalorian when I found this online, and so I'm like, you know what I want. I'm gonna get me one of these, just because I think I can I can build out a full Mandalorian costume, or more, I should say Mandalorian influenced costume, right? And that way I'm not the Mandalorian. I'm gonna be some sort of a uh, you know bounty hunter. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, but that's way that's stuff. going like, you know, like I, a, I can that, that fighter, I'll be fighter ready pilot. For zombie apocalypse with this. I can headbutt a zombie. And because it actually has padding built in, it, it's like I'm investing in my future here, you know. Um, but that's the stuff where I'm like, just Greg, you know, didn't understand what I was trying to do. He didn't understand. I told him if I hit him in the back of the head with a bat, he'll never. I'm see ready for that. Oh. And it would be so. That's how you're supposed to be. It would Sometimes be. Sometimes you have to actually be, look. Like, I, I practice this so I can put the headphones right here and I can still hear. So yes. you can't hear anything. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's 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 gonna be viable. This will keep people from coughing directly. You can't hear this. And then when I hit him in the head, head with the bat, and he like he can't see it coming. Uh -huh. He can't uh -huh. protect himself from it. So it'll be it'll it's be this. Really but funny. I'm thinking if I build out the whole Star Wars vibe alongside of all of this, I think it'll be fine. Like I'll get a blaster, um, and all that good stuff. I think it'll all work out. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. I'm that's gonna do it. I'm gonna hit him like you know. I don't know why, man. Why do you have to be destructive? Man? Just let people live. You know, it's not. I'm not gonna not kill you. To you. I'm gonna hit you. <laughs> like maybe so, like yes. a wiffle ball bat. Y'all tell me that. When nah, you're... man. It's just I don't get to cosplay. I haven't cosplayed yet, so you this should will do be it. My intro. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's it. That's where uh, if you see me in a full down thing, it'll have to be destructible or compartmentalized so I don't like combust because I get too hot. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, because especially uh, if you're wearing that during like Dragon Con when it's the dead heat mm. of summer <laughs> with all the millions Whatever. of people around. Yeah. <laughs> I can't buy that space helmet. It's gonna be, it's gonna be this. I just gotta get my little, uh, what do you call it, my little um, air tanks on the back. Uh huh. Yeah, I'll be ready for the world. I'll be ready okay. The world. Yes. <laughs> but yes, y'all. Um, thank y'all. This has been great, man. Dana, long time, man. This is just, yes, it's been too right. long. We we'll have to do yeah. like a mini get together. So when I pick up my stuff yeah. from Greg, and then I have you autograph the, all the stuff I'm picking up, and then uh, okay. other stuff I'm ordering, and the stuff I got from Greg that 18 items that I got from Greg that I oh, need Lord. you to sign. Let's do it. Let's let's do all of those. Let's have a big old let's autograph session. <laughs> right, yes. right. Come on now. All right. Well, see, I'm gonna go get these cheering. We're gonna watch yes. this movie. And then I'll take it's a only, picture of midnight. that professional framing that Joanne's did of your yeah. first two works with all the <laughs> other stuff I got from um, Comic Con, and let you see yes. how it turned out. That's awesome! I'm ready to see. They, they, they did two big forward. frames for me. <laughs> nice, nice. I feel bad. I still haven't framed anything of my work. I don't have any work framed. I'm gonna get one day. Um, <laughs> Corinne Bailey Ray. See, back in the day, I used to get Martin to do pencil commission for me for mm -hmm. nothing. Like, we would just be eating, and he would, I'd be like, draw this. And he'd be like, okay. You know, um, so I got that one. And then I got the one where, now this one, I actually paid him with a um, Zach Speed's, what was it? The, the big Zach he, he was stuck the at the big Zach Cat. <laughs> He was hungry and he was like, Can yeah. you give me something to eat? And I was like, Nope. <laughs> and, and, uh, finally, I agreed. I was like, uh, Can you do a commission for me? He's like, Yeah. So uh, yeah. it's uh, me writing Battle Cat from here. Yes. Oh, I remember <laughs> seeing that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. I got that one. So I had to frame that one. Yeah. That was an actual will work for food moment. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be so less expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and Mark, uh -oh. is it, I have to tell you this. Um, the, mm. the drawing that you did of the other dream I had that had Moon Girl and oh, everybody yeah. in it. When I saw my niece last year, she was asking me, she said, who's this little girl? Uh, with with storm and stuff, and I told her, and she got right. so into wanting to know about Moon Girl. So while I was yeah. there, I ended up ordering through Amazon a couple volumes, and we read them while I was there. <laughs> and I got pictures of me reading her Moon Girl. And <laughs> nice, nice. And I'm, me, I'm gonna try to pull it up. Is this a this a good high quality? And it's just thing. because she saw that that. That drawing yeah. you did for me, and she was like, nice. "Who's that?" And that that nice. got her a little curious mind, and now she was like, "Okay, Auntie, when we're we gonna read more Moon Girl?" There it is. That's that's yeah. the last one she did for me. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. a had, yes. uh, Moon Girl, Vixen, yes. Storm. I, still, I, I keep forgetting her name. What's her name? She's the newest <laughs> the Green, Green Lantern. Lantern. Mm hmm. Um, of course we got. Uh, our girl from uh, yeah, what is listen, man? I, I was I'm a fan of what they did with um, the Wine Division show. I know they were just setting things up. Yeah, got I, Monica I, finally I, showing her power, a little bit of I powers. Still, I, yeah, no, I still wanted to see more than that, but it's cool. I know they're working on it. Hurry up, yeah, so we can actually get that connected. Little, uh, mm -hmm. so I can be happy about that. Yes, and of course, uh, this is our cat. Yes, Yoruichi. Right. <laughs> uh huh. See? Yeah, I got Nubia Get right in. there. Yes. Girl Get power all the way through. I, I had to redesign Moon Girl's outfit. I think, it's, you know, it just takes a little bit of design, and I, anything would be better, I think, because she's, she's brilliant. Mm -hmm. She can make some cool, some cool suits. I don't know. Yes. You know, things like that. <laughs> Yeah, my, 
my niece actually asked us. She said, "So, what? Which volume would I see that outfit in?" I said, "In the future." <laughs> <laughs> That's good thinking. That's good thinking. That's how you're supposed to. Do. Speaking, said, this, is future, this is in the future. She she had to come right. through a portal, and that's why nice. you're not seeing it in the comics yet. Alternate reality version. Exactly. Yes. So she was like, "Ah, oh, I got you." I said she crossed between portals. I was like, "You remember into the Spider Verse when they came? You know the yeah. different universes." It's like she was like, "Yeah." I said same thing. She's like, "Oh, right, okay. got it." That's a great explanation. I do that like, which earth ideas. is she on? Is she on Earth 34 or which earth? I said, I don't know which earth this one was on. <laughs> <laughs> I do that with all my fan ideas. Alternate reality. Exactly. Yes. Greg looks like he's in deep thought. No, that's his, uh, that's his tired face. <laughs> I'm sad, I'm sad, I'm sad next even to if he's tired the way show. he looked and he's like that, it literally mm -hmm. looks like he's in deep thought. <laughs> Yeah, looks can that's, be that's a trick. I was about to say, that's a trick. That's a trick. Hey, that's how you have to make it look when you're doing these. It's like, don't make it look like you're tired. You got all that practice from doing all these cons. Can't make them think you're tired. Right. Mm, sometimes I got to be real. Exactly. <laughs> I give them the real. Whatever. I'm tired. What you want? Moana feels me. Right. <laughs> 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 Well, thank you, man. I'm gonna, well, we, uh, I'm gonna yeah, get to this we, movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, relax. But thank you so much, Marcus, for joining us tonight. Yes. Uh, definitely, everybody seeing My you pleasure. putting uh, peace together, and you know, seeing how it turned out to the end and everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone who's hung in all the way into now. <laughs> y'all, yeah. yeah. some troopers. Appreciate we appreciate y'all and all y'all support. And everything. And once again, um, we are now only seven backers away from us unlocking Marcus's commission tier. So uh, definitely go uh, and back us. Go to MoanaNuiPodcast.com. And once we hit the seven, uh, 75 backers, we're going to unlock Marcus's commission um, tier. That way you can try to grab those tiers while you can to get an opportunity to have Marcus draw something for you. So uh, definitely take advantage of that. And then also we're gonna unlock three additional indie comics to go in the indie bundle. So definitely be, you know, definitely help us push for that and definitely tune in for our episode tomorrow for our dance hall party. Um, that we're going to have a DJ playing some dance hall music. So, Greg, Marcus, you tune in at 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Y'all can listen to some dance hall music, get y'all a little dance dance on in the background. Y'all can even <laughs> tune, you know, comment in the comments if you want the DJ to play something for y'all. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say, as long as I'm listening, I, don't, I have a problem with watching Yes, dance. like we told everybody, y'all see me and yeah. Moana, and whoever wants to join us live, y'all see us, yeah. but y'all just can be watching it, it. Okay, <laughs> like good. everybody else, right. unless you want to be yeah. brave enough and join us tomorrow. <laughs> right, right. Okay, beautiful. I listen but, to music. But other than that, please also let them know, anyone who doesn't know how to find you, how they can find you, and definitely uh, follow you and definitely purchase things from both you and Greg. Definitely. Tuskegee Airs, H-E-I-R-S, TuskegeeAirs.com is where you guys can get the books and paraphernalia if you go to the shop. Uh, on there, you will find uh, all the individual issues as well as the graphic novel. Greg's got his comic on there. Search for Sarica and some other stuff. we got a t-shirt on there. Um, Apparently, we're going to have to add these new shirts. You can link this new uh, site with uh, Shopify, Greg. So we can uh, create the shirts and then link them to the Shopify store. We're going to blow this up. I'm glad. I got some shoes coming. I'm excited. We got backpacks on there. How did the regular shirts get? How did the regular shirts get? <sighs> Wait, did you tell Where is this? That blue one you showed me the other day? What was that from? Was that the same site? He's pulling it out. Okay, that's not the right one. 
That's not the right one. Okay, that's upstairs. <laughs> but it came out good. The regular shirt that only gets the window. I hate the window shirts. It, it drives me nuts. But, um, it just fell over. I'm going to pick it up as soon as I'm done with this. Okay. But yes, it, it came out good. We got some other stuff coming. Anyway, uh, accessories, purses. Hours. MarcusVisual.com. You can yeah. find Marcus the Visual at anywhere on the interweb. Just look up Marcus the Visual. Um, Greg, right there, you see me on Instagram. I have another site. Uh, and then I said MarcusVisual.com. And there's PlatformL7.com. And then um, you can find us, you know, just anywhere around Atlanta sometimes. Also, sometimes. Yeah. Follow them. The they'll let you know store. when they're doing a pop up somewhere. Oh yeah, we you Sometimes. know the weather. The weather's getting better. I'm gonna be popping back up. <sighs> yeah, how it was. Not that man. I got a tent just because of that pain. It was I was sweating, y'all. It was terrible. But yes, thank you. Bless You're your welcome. Hugs. So definitely follow yes. them, and definitely if you haven't pledged. Uh, definitely go to MoanaNuiPodcast.com, get your pledge in, and you have the ability to be able to upgrade. We have several add-ons that you can take advantage of, including grabbing that indie digital bundle of all these amazing comics, including our previous guest, uh, Robert Jeffrey, with his Route 3, Volume 1. So definitely uh, pick up our indie bundle that you can add on to any of the tiers. So definitely go to wananui.podcast.com. So, Wana, any last words? Nope. Thank you all for joining us and for being on <laughs> this long. <laughs> uh, we certainly set a record tonight. Um, yes. <laughs> but yeah, yes, tell me next time we're doing it. Telephone. Well, I wasn't expecting it to go this long, trust me. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. I just would have brought snacks. And, yeah, like, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm getting to the hangry, oh, okay. hangry phase myself. So. Lucky, man. You gotta have your snacks ready to go. Like, yeah. Oh, no. like, yeah, we did Robert before this one. Yeah, so. no. yeah. Oh, yeah, man, go to bed. <laughs> just like five hours long. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Good night, everybody. Take care. Good night, good night. Good night.